What's up, guys? Jonathan here. I know we don't normally start the show this way, but we have something extremely exciting to talk to you about. It's the thing we've been teasing for months now. It's happening. Bombs Away Live. That's right. Bombs Away Live, the only place where you can get the movie screen and have us make fun of it all in one giant live event. And if you're in the Southern California area, you are not going to want to miss this. August 16th at the Frida Cinema in Santa Ana, a fully themed event transporting you back to 1987 when this film was released. Featuring a hilarious pre-show filled with clips from previous episodes, multiple photo opportunities, 80s and movie themed costume contest, and ninjas. That's right, ninjas. All this and more to celebrate the screening of the 1987 B-movie masterpiece, Miami Connection. That's right, we're doing Miami Connection. The Taekwondo 80s synth pop masterpiece written, directed, and starring YK Kim comes to the screen for one night only, and right after, we're going to rip it apart. Featuring audience participation and live Q&A from you. That's right, you, but there's only one chance for you to do that. That's if you join us August 16th for Bombs Away Live. You can get your tickets for this amazing event by typing bombsawaylive.eventbrite.com. That's bombsawaylive.eventbrite.com. See you ninjas there. My father! I found my father! Oh my god! 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 <laughs> I just feel that this, this felt not bad. appropriate. It's, this whole movie is not appropriate now. This whole movie made me feel uncomfortable. But what kind of movies did they use as tag, or what kind of taglines did they use to make this movie seem? Well, hold on, because not scary. I don't know. Oh, I I happen to have carved the taglines in my chest today, <laughs> so <laughs> I have to read them upside down. Oh God, put your shirt on forever. Yeah. Uh, here we go. With boyfriends like this, enemies. Or the last thing you need. Yeah, but they also That's got, confusing. They kind of got just... both at the end. They got boyfriends and enemies. So it was like, well, you probably should have just gone with one instead like of... Like five boyfriends by yeah, the end. Don't check all your boxes. <laughs> God. Next, he's dying to date you. This seems more like it's like, like, like a, a zombie. zombie. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. It doesn't seem like a, like, I'm obsessed and crazy. Right. This is, like, more of the tagline for My Boyfriend's Back. Yeah. <laughs> my Boyfriend's Back. Honestly, we rented that movie a lot as a child. Yeah. I just want to do an appreciation episode for it, so it's on my list now. Uh, yep. I'm going to force you to do that one. I also, yeah. There's much more taglines to go, so <laughs> know, sorry. strap uh, in. Uh, lie down with dogs, and you'll end up with fleas. Lie down with David. And you'll be lucky if you get up at all. Well, once, a, once again, this is more like it's a like a slasher movie. Yeah, but it also seems like way too long. Well, like, but like it follows. Like you sleep with them and oh. you're done. You sleep with dogs and it's called bestiality. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, and you'll need an exterminator. Right. <laughs> uh, next, the fairy tale couldn't get much worse. Uh, I don't want to call totally it a fairy tale. It totally could get much worse, by the way. Get worse. Yeah, it's <laughs> way like, worse. Can get worse, not a fairy tale. Like, you <laughs> lied on both ends of this tag. I mean, to be fair, with everything else that David does in this movie, he never, like, forces him himself to... She does have sex with him willingly. <laughs> yeah, he just forces himself on... On Margot? Uh, yeah, everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. He beats himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he never beats other people. Guys like him don't grow on trees or even swing on them. All right, I can't even finish this one. That's so stupid already. Tarzan? Um, wait, G guys like him don't grow on trees or even swing on them, but he might just hang you from one. Still Tarzan. Somebody just watched Scream. No, that was all Tarzan. <laughs> that's what he did to Clayton. Yeah. Clayton. That's how he says it. Clayton and Tarzan. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Together forever or else. Still, I feel like that would be like a wedding horror or but a wedding slasher. This one just makes me think of Rick Astley. Yeah. <laughs> Together forever and ever we'll find. 
<laughs> you really like that one. Get off the podcast right now. <laughs> well, Shut it down. I didn't Rick roll you, did I? <laughs> no, but it was close. Yeah. I did. I was like, never gonna. No, never mind. Never gonna. <laughs> Don't do get, it. Do good there forever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the next one, the attraction was obvious. The danger wasn't. That's probably the best one. Yeah, that one. That one sums it up. Sure, that good because it's not obvious, right? Yeah, like that's 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 a crystal clear one. Okay, Again, next one. Crystal clear, like one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next one. Jesus, I know. Attraction, infatuation, desire, love, fear. Okay, so this one ties into the whole thing. Why is this movie named Fear? Like, obviously, we're all afraid of it, but also like. It's not the epitome of fear. Okay, it's so just which like, ooh, I'm scared. So what which which one came out first, uh, fear or scream? Because the same year. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I and can't. they look they're filmed almost identically. Yeah, yeah. So with a budget of six point five million and a gross of twenty point five million, with two breast via a nudie magazine, one rave riot. One finger bang roller coaster, one sex scene, one man giving himself bruises, two plays of Come Down by Bush, two plays of Wild Horses by the Sundays, one neck snap, one severed dog head, one drill through the hand, two gunshot victims, one man run over by a car, one stabbing by a peace pipe, and one death by falling out a window with five deaths in total. With a 6.2 on IMDb, a 51 Metacritic score, and a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's 1996's Fear. Let's drop some bombs. Now they've gotta face me. Your Uncle Sam. So let me the fucking house! Jason, mother is talking to you! How would you like to curl up with a good book? In your dreams! Make your wishes! I did it! I jumped to Lindbergh, baby! I am Joseph Mingala! Mingala! Welcome to Bombs Away, the only podcast recorded inside a projection booth, or our new tagline, which is basically the funny Yelp of bad movies. <laughs> you like hey, it? Thank you, Danny. <laughs> yes, it's from our new uh, listener, Danny David. And uh, yeah, that's that's how he described us in his post. So my name is Jonathan Young. Joining us in the studio, as always, is... The 22-year uh, and still relevant movie about how to treat women properly, but not doing it properly, Jared Seifert. That was elaborate. I know. It's just, it's sad because I was watching this movie and I was like, oh, so many men still need to see this. Yeah. But in 2018. But I, I, I still think that they won't get the message properly. Oh, no. They'll be like, man, she was leading him on. When what it was a literally DT. just like, she was just I know, like, right? well, probably not. Like, this was honestly the most polite way to not even like, she didn't even lead him on at no, all. No. At all. She never gave him like sh- like, "Oh, I know you acted out, but like I'm I'm just not no, feeling it." She no, no, literally legitimately like, Don't contact me. <laughs> yeah. Legitimately he comes around a a pole, says two sentences before a riot breaks out, and boom, they're they're all off on their adventure. So yeah. there was no leading on. There was no like, "Hi, I just met you." And like, <laughs> "Look at movie, this." For a movie titled Fear, the most fearful thing is that it still needs to be watched today to let women know that men like this exist. I, like I said, I I would agree with you yeah. if, if the, the point was better. Yeah. If it was just <laughs> like, a little bit more polished and not so like, let's make Marky Mark seem really sexy but dangerous. Right. Like you could tell they were like, okay, he is scary and it is an actual problem in America, but like. Make him a little cute. Yeah, they. Like, you know, this was perceived to where it's like it. It will be okay. Everything that he does to you, as long as he doesn't do it to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, because he's hot. Rape. God damn it! Murder. It's another Fifty Shades of Gray. It is. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
before we before we dive in, uh, I just want to remind people. I know you heard a commercial about it just in the beginning, but please join us for Miami Connection, August sixteenth. If you haven't gotten tickets yet, uh, grab them now because they're 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 gonna go. So uh, please Sound join like us. Hot cakes. I know, right? Everyone's like, "Ow, ow! They're burning my hands. They're such hot cakes." <laughs> Why did I buy? I thought I bought movie tickets, not hot cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an IAP. I'm in a goddamn theater. <laughs> so, yeah, please join us. If you're in the Santa Ana area, please join us at the Frida Cinema, August 16th. It's going to be a live one a live show um, immediately following the screening of 1987's Miami Connection. If you have not uh, seen or heard about this movie, look up Miami Connection on YouTube right now. It's going to be insane. Like, it's going to be so much fun. Costume contest, 80s uh, theming, prizes, drinking party, you name it. It's going to be there. Uh, no, actually, don't name it. I, we don't got any more money for the budget. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Budget's, budget's like, real bad. Budget's locked. <laughs> oh, so, <the> budget. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, moving on to fear. Here yeah. we go. I I, I think I uh, I'm bringing back my Wahlberg impression uh, today. Haven't heard it uh, officially since the first episode. Uh. Yeah, uh, I've been practicing. You know, I get into it by going. I think we just found a transformer. <laughs> And I that's thought it. we had a second Wahlberg before this. Did we? I don't know. Guys, if we did, <laughs> blends in. correct us. I don't he know. blends in so well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this movie starts out like Congo. And yeah, it's... <laughs> with its drums. I warned you on that one. I was like, it seems a little like tribal drums. Yeah, but I don't understand it seems a why. scary. Because it's sending, to me, it's a different message. Like, to me, it's it, like that music. I'm like, oh, I started Jurassic Park. Right? Yeah. Uh, but it's not. I was so in for, like, adventure, going through jungle, running through the woods. Because even the trailer is like, oh, you're all going to run through woods. Well, you don't even like trailers. So you would have maybe, if I was like, here you go, watch Fear, right? And it starts out this way, you would have been like, oh, what? It, what's Fear about? It's like they're being hunted by, like, jungle natives? Like, right, well, is that PC? Even uh, then, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it even, because, like, Obviously, on our shorties, like, we saw the trailer. Sure, sure. But, and, like, even in the trailer, there was shots of them, like, running through the woods. But it was just, like, the two scenes of running through the woods, where it's the opening yeah. scene, where you get to know the dad, kind of. Yeah, and then, and then like, Gary's death. One of the death. last to second, yeah, yeah, like, That's second it. to last yeah. scenes. Uh, so, yeah, woods aren't really a thing, in the other than the fact of where they live. So, they live in um just an offshoot of... Uh, I guess, I, I, I guess, uh. Seattle? Yeah, it's definitely Seattle. The Seattle coast. Yeah. This is a movie that likes to assume that you're smart enough to recognize the horizon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I almost didn't. No, even whenever I was watching the movie, I was like, oh, cool. Uh, where are we? Space Needle. There it is. Like, yeah, I had right? to check for the Space Needle. Yeah. So then after this, uh, I we're immediately the first thing we're shown, other than the father running through the woods, or maybe it's at the oh, same he's time. He's not running; he's sprinting. Yeah, which is not a healthy way to run unless you're like an Olympic athlete trying out for like the hundred meter dash or some yeah. so- shit. Like, I I haven't seen people like sprint for their workout, especially when their workout is just running to security gate and back home. Yeah. No, but the, so this is back and forth between him and that. We also the first shot is like, oh, here's Reese Witherspoon just showering, oh, and and we get the shot so much throughout the film. It's like here's her showering, happy. Here's her yeah. showering, sad. Here's my, her showering, confused. My question though is to you: is um, do her emotions play throughout any scenes without the shower? No, no. <laughs> my my question. None. My question is, like, did Witherspoon sell her soul to Hollywood, like, long ago? Because she does not age. Ageless. Does Goddess. Age. One of my favorites, too, because she is such an amazing person. She even, she started her own production company that is all female just to get female production out there. Because she saw a problem and she went for it. I am so much behind Reese 100% of the way. I love her so much. Sorry. Uh. It's she's part of the reason Big Little Eyes got created. She's a goddess. Yeah. So after this, we, we we've got a typical '90s dad. Uh, his name is Stephen, right? 
Uh, it looks like he was played by, like, he looks like a Liv Shriver knockoff, or Liv Sh- Shriver. Okay, see, I thought this actor might have passed away, because I hadn't seen him in anything... Me either. ...consistent, right? Did, did you check it out? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, so we'll check it out, but uh, go on with what you were saying. Oh, because he was, like, he was actually really good. Yeah. Like, he was a good actor, so I just assumed that he had... The actor is William Peterson. Died. You you just you just immediately assume people die if they're not working anymore. Oh, he CSI. <laughs> That's what I know him from. He is from CSI. Okay, that was, you were very excited. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I just assumed he was dead, but he is very much in CSI, and that's one hundred percent where I knew him from. So maybe he just made the switch to TV off movies. Yeah. But I definitely was like, I've seen this face somewhere. But he's also like. A hot dad that you're like, he's not like. He's a '90s dad. He's so like, oh, (laughs) I let him take me to bed. Jesus, (laughs) you're gonna you're gonna say that more than half this cast could take you to bed. No, (laughs) just the men. Well, uh, that's half the cast. (laughs) There, I do feel that that men and women are equally represented in this. Like, just right down the middle. It's like you have five girls on the cast and and five guys on the cast. Uh, so moving on, yeah, uh, we have we are established that Stephen is the father of Nicole, played by uh, Reese Witherspoon, and Stephen also he is uh, is he the father of the younger boy as well, or is that uh, between him and the stepmother? See, that was super confusing because in like one of the early scenes, he's like, "Oh, how was the basketball game?" and he was like, "Oh, oh this thing where good. he's like he called me dad." Yeah, well, he's like, oh, did your dad watch it? And he was like, he never does. But then the kid continues to call the guy talking to him dad. So I'm like, he's either accustomed to calling two guys dad or one of them just like right. doesn't actually fill this the slot of dad. I I don't know. It's, it's not. It's there not are some it's... things in this film that are not properly established, such as like, I don't really know what his job is either architect yeah kind of but then at the same time when they're gonna break in at the end she's like steven you designed this didn't you i'm like wait is he the same guy that designed the purge stuff like it's the same she's like you designed it reinforced walls locks security i'm like i thought he was just an architect not a security designer an architect could do some yeah they could but the fact that like we're just getting this now yeah in the final moments Like, that's something that should have been designed of, like, this is why I always watch my security cams and stuff like that. And this is why we live in something like a fortress. Maybe because I'm overprotective about my entire life of security, you know? But no, it's just a throwaway line to establish why that they're not breaking through the glass. Right. (laughs) That's what I felt it was. Well, they were trying to break through the glass, but they couldn't. Right. That's what they had to drill through it. Right, but that's what I'm saying is why th- <laughs> why they couldn't get through. Yeah. Yeah. So, another piece of foreshadowing. Like, this movie has a lot of foreshadowing. It has a lot of foreshadowing in, like, a shitty way. Obvious that foreshadowing. That you actually don't understand. Yeah, like the dog like, whistle, right? Oh, daddy bracelet. <laughs> yeah. Like, the dog whistle, I'm like, oh, oh that'll come back. You want a peace pipe. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not something you would think would ever come back in any movie. But, of course... White people need to steal Native American things. It just seems like everything that is foreshadowed is not foreshadowed in the right way. It's not even like a red herring at this point. It's no. just like, we're going to give you um, a little taste of a hint, but it's not a full hint. Right? No. So our first scene, it opens up. It's really kind of, all of these scenes seems just like, like they just seem pointless. Yeah, they like, just kind of exist even the whole next movie to seems, each other. It just like it all seems a little pointless, but like they do drive home great points, you know? Right. This is a movie that almost seems like somewhere along the line somebody was like, I'm gonna write what happened yeah. to me. Well, maybe this is just me going with it right now. This is actually how subtle this kind of shit can happen. And even that like this is blown out of proportion compared to the subtlety of how it actually happens. Sure. Because there is like within um uh, domestic violence within sexual abuse there is a conditioning period to where there's time that they kind of get uh, they get convinced that this type of behavior is normal that this happens to everyone that 
they warp it to place the blame on the victim rather than themselves to where I'm like, maybe this movie is just taking that step of it without actually showing it, which is a fault of the movie. But at the same time, it is something that needs to be addressed. I'm not going to ever go that deep in this episode. Yeah, I know. But I'm not. I mean, I'm, gonna I'm probably going to say something off color. Oh, that yeah. Then's going to get me fired ten years from now. I know. You know. <laughs> Calm down, James. <laughs> um. So now we're we're moving on. We we are met. We are introduced to Margot. Now Margot is played by uh Alyssa Milano. Where I'm like, whoa, who's the okay. boss now? Right off the bat, I thought that Alyssa Milano was from Scream 1, the one that's like, ooh, I guess I gotta, like, die and scream and break my ankle now. Scream 1? Scary Movie 1. Sorry. My bad. Oh. I messed that one up. So Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah. You actually thought it was her? No, I was like, man, Shannon (laughs) Shannon Elizabeth had a lot of work done after this movie. (laughs) No, this is Alyssa Milano from Who's the Boss? Yeah, sure, I'd watch that. Yo, Angela! (laughs) Nothing? Nope, nothing. Jesus. I never watched that. The T-Mobile girl for a long time? The one on the motorcycle? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that was her. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. (laughs) I would more, I would more, uh, con, con, not convinced. <laughs> I would confuse Alyssa Milano with Terry Hatcher. Definitely. That's a guy, though. What? I'm kidding. It just sounds like a man's name. <laughs> you don't even know who it is, do you? I don't. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lois and Clark? Oh, Superman. Well, <laughs> you're just... <laughs> you are killing me today. I No, <laughs> Terry Hatcher are Desperate Housewives. I know oh, you watch Desperate Housewives. Of OC. <laughs> I'm just here to make I'm you mad. Moving on. Yep. All right, fine. All right, so they both go to this place called the Largo, which is kind of a coffee house slash pool bar slash normal bar, but a bunch of hipstery punks and are can, there in Seattle. You can order sandwiches, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really in the fully mi- understand it. In the middle of a party, you can be like, hey, turkey and Reuben. Yeah. It really doesn't entirely add up what the purpose of this place is. Is it a coffee shop? Is it a bar? Is it a club? Is it a pool house? It's just got all of its own things going for it. It's violently 90s. And it is loud. Yeah. Okay, so every single time that there's music playing in this film, it is takes over the scene i thought i just had a broken (laughs) copy no because i couldn't hear jack poo okay so this they they were like yeah and we got this awesome soundtrack like bush is gonna be on it and like uh, you know everybody loves that song and so we're gonna play it at the loudest fucking decimals possible right and then mark he's gonna whisper through the whole film. Yeah. And we are going to drive theater owners nuts. It made me insane. Because <laughs> I literally was like, oh, I really should have tried to like get a better version. That's or what copy fear of this. means. It's <laughs> you're afraid that you turned up the 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 your sound device too loud and, and then blew it out. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, by the next scene it's just gonna switch over and it's gonna be super loud and you're gonna right? wake up your 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 uh, roommates. It's you know? terrible. Like oh my god, my kids are asleep. I tried to watch Fear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're finger blasting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically the entire, like, purpose for this scene is, like, I see a hot go over there and we got a flyer about a party. Oh, you mean T-T-Y-L. the, 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 the uh, flyer that says fetish, but it has a cat on it? So that's awfully confusing to me, because I'm like, what is the fetish? Cats. <laughs> is it, yeah, <laughs> just, just a bunch of cats just right? running around. It's a cat party. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Then Alyssa Margo is uh, looking up, and she sees her guy, who's this, like, filthy trash dog of a man. Like, 55-year-old dude. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like, definitely out of her age range, and not even like, oh, he's, like, five years older. But, it's like, oh, he's, like, 15 or 20 years older. But also doesn't seem to fit in with his gang of guys either. And not sexy. No. And she is all... Okay, well, to be fair, Alyssa Milano in this film is trying to fuck anything and anything. Oh, including yeah. the little brother. 
Yeah. Did you hear that line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to it. <laughs> uh. Like, no, literally, she walks into a scene, and if she's not, like, looking something up and down, ready to hop on it, she is, like, leaning against the door, like, ready to be like, take me now. Yeah. If right? she's not lips out, what's the point? Touche. That was gross. Yeah. I know. For you. That yeah, was a visual was really you can't put it. back in the box. No, I don't ever want to open that box. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because then lips would be out. Ugh. <laughs> oh, God. I even feel dirty. I know. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't even know. Like, at this point, I know the scenes, but I don't know, like, what order they happen because it's just kind of, like, picked up from school, goes to a club, meets. Right. And then goes somewhere else. And then uh, so the things film, happen. Well, uh, the film establishes through, like, weird dialogue in which I have to do some math that she's 16. Yeah. Right? Because basically there's this there's this thing where uh, Stephen is driving uh, N- Nicole home. Uh, from school he picked her up from school and uh she goes god do i really have to go to james taylor again he's like you haven't seen james taylor in forever like uh and she goes i was six and that was 10 years ago and i'm like uh, uh do the math carry he's the like, one you yeah. were six no the, the, actually the line is um is it he goes it takes longer to sort through 40 years of data than it does 16 and I'm like, damn it, why didn't you just say that like two lines ago? You made me do all this math to try to figure out if I was going to feel uncomfortable through this whole movie or not. <laughs> and I do. Yeah. You know, because this is another thing that the movie, and for some reason doesn't really address, is how old David is versus Nicole, and if there's another problem we should be talking about that this movie never does. He's which 40. is. No, not Steven, David. Oh, David. David's <laughs> 22, 21. So there there could be another issue that this movie's not addressing. Oh, they totally 100% don't. They just brushed over it. They don't talk about statutory rape. No. At all. And that's movie. kind of what I think the dad should probably be really harping on more in this yeah. film. Yeah. And then he wouldn't look like a dad who just wants to fuck his own daughter. Yeah. Because that kind of keeps happening to me, too. Like, this is a film where when you see the daddy's girls bracelet, like, most girls would uh, unironically buy that for themselves. Being yeah. like, hey, I'm daddy's girl. This is the one case where I'm like, I believe he bought that for her. Yeah. <laughs> because, well, I don't know, even in the kitchen when we're first, like, introduced to the two characters, he, like, kind of looks her up and down like he's more of a stepdad. That I was like, oh, we're going to yeah. get into some of that weird... Like Pornhub stuff that's on online now, like yeah. that step porn, it's a bit because hot. he's looking at her and she's got like those weird frilly anklet socks that like only like five year old patent leather pet and patent leather girls used to wear. Yeah. yeah, and then he actually says it looks like you're dressing like you're twelve, right? And I'm like, but that was only four years ago. Right. <laughs> um, she's close enough, right? But. Yeah, it makes it weird, and they never do address this. And then it gets weirder because the scene ends with him going, like, he establishes whatever they did say in the scene that it doesn't matter, right? And he goes, okay, my little sugar plum, right? Where I'm like, okay. But then she doubles down, and she goes, uh, <laughs> okay, my little nectarine. And I literally scre- I went, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, I was done. I was yeah. done already. I was like, this is weird. Awkward moment. This is weird. Is this what happens in Seattle? Se- Seattle people, let us know. Like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, it's real rapey and incestuous up there. Uh, <laughs> everybody has an X carved on their stomach. Ah. It's weird. Um, so then, through a couple other developments, uh, the dad, uh, has to keep doing work. A- instead of whatever they promised, some sort of family dinner or outing or whatever. Yeah. and Well, the concert. Something, yeah, but Nicole, who didn't even want to go to the concert, is, like, upset about it? Well, no, he, um, so he gets called, he has to go to Vancouver. Right, but she literally, a scene earlier, was like, do I have to go? Well, so yeah. why is she so upset now? Well, no, she plays a show, so then she can be like, well, he's not going, so I can go to my party now, is what I assume. Mm, I don't know. Because I think she would just leave the room. Why is she putting on a show? for like? She doesn't put on a show. She does just leave the room. No, she storms out to, enough for him to be angry and hit the cabinet door. That's her leaving He, like, punches. Room. No, he punches the cabinet door after she leaves the room. 
Well, because she's As, like, well, I guess you can leave like you always do. Right. And I'm like, why is she angry? She literally just a scene before was like, I don't want to go. Well, she adjusted her plans to meet with his plans and then his plans changed, which is OK. But and you should just be like, aren't okay. you should just be like, uh, leave the room, not storm out. And then be like, sweet, I got what I wanted. Why? Do, I don't think she was putting on a show. I think there's something left out. It's called teen angst. Just roll with it. Okay. <laughs> sure. Fine. I can tell you want to move on. Right. So. No, I just don't think it's as big as a problem. It just, to me, it is in the sense of like, do not establish things that are not going to play out or like, because this will all add up by the end. Well, I think in her mind, she was like, okay, I won't go to this party. I will actually have a good time. I will enjoy my family. And then that. But there's not even a discussion about like that kind of like guilt over going or not going. There's no internal discussion. There's no external with like Margot. We talk about in the car and she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but there should be family moment here. But prior to that, there should be like, I really want to go, but I can't because my dad, this is a thing. Well, she walks in and she's like. Oh, can I help you with anything? And she's like, oh, yeah, the fruit's in the fridge. And then she's like, oh, I'm going to get along. I'm going to actually play the part. Oh, I got the fruit out of the fridge. Ha ha. I dropped an apple. She starts cutting it up. You're you're making in. it like she played it like she was like clearly she was acting. excited to go. Yeah. But she, why? Because she psyched herself up for it. She was like, you know, maybe this whole thing is good. It's I didn't see any of this play out on screen. <laughs> well, you weren't watching the movie like I was. I, but that's the thing. Yeah, People <laughs> can watch movies in different ways. Oh, okay. God damn. Okay, you go. You move on then. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't want to address this, right. so I think she actually did get hyped up for it. But then he was like, no. And then she was like, ah, crap. And then she was like, wait, that means I get my way. I think this was lazy writing or lazy editing. One it of was. the two. I think it was, but I'm just making excuses for it because I want to try and make it make sense in my own head. No, and I understand that. Yeah. I just don't. I I. There's something about this where, and it'll all play out or actually not play out by the yeah. end. And that's what I mean about, like, we keep establishing things throughout this movie in which you're like, oh, father and daughter are really going to reconnect by the end. Oh, yeah. Right? And, it's, and it just was like, thing. hey, you just, you want to roll credits now? Like, let's roll. Let's, let's do it. I mean, Mark's dead. So, yeah. <laughs> might as well, like, you know, we got nothing else to show, you know, because that's how I feel yeah. is like, we keep doing these things where we're like okay they have a problem here and they have a problem here yeah. he has a problem with his marriage he she has a problem with this right all of that should probably reconcile 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 by the end and everybody should make up and they're like nah just roll the credits we're good here they, they'll figure it out you know? have you ever known me though to not make sense <laughs> Or try to not make sense no 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 I I know oh you I know. enjoy your theories that's why you're here yeah <laughs> so that's what I'm doing I know um, yeah, so she walks out, she goes to this party, and it's like... Straight up 90s rave. Maybe 12, 15 seconds of this, like, rave going over Yeah, well. we've got, we got people taking E, we got, like, girls in full midriffs at all we times. men making out with other men, and I was like, yes, show it as acceptance. I actually did not see that, like, I love that you zoomed the in on that. The camera focused in on it. Didn't see it. I, everything, well, because this is, it I was, was a uh, moment in the Okay, film. I was furiously typing, I was like, Jinko oh. jeans, and bracelets, yeah. and crazy hair, like, I was trying to paint the scene God here, and I- rhino on their jeans. <laughs> yeah. uh. No, <sighs> it was all violently 90s, and I hated every moment of it. Sure. But- there was an actual gay couple making out. And I was like, okay, into it. But then it's like five seconds past that. We start our awkward conversation with Reese and Mark. Right. Because their names actually don't matter. We know them now today as Reese Witherspoon and Mark Walder. Uh-huh. But it's like, hey, I saw you here. Oh, you heard what they said? Because the music's just like, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's fine because it doesn't matter because in between their conversation was about five to 15 seconds of yep. complete silence because it was, hey, 15 seconds of silence. Hey. Hey. Huh. 20 more seconds of silence. Hey, say you hello like to your dancing, mother for but me. But you're not dancing. Yeah. Right? So, hey, you like, mo- you like dancing? You like dancing? 
We can not dancing. It was literally a three minute long conversation with about 12, 15 <laughs> words. Of well, like, because they paid good dancing. money for that track and they need yeah. to play it out to its. Like, Their conversation does not like it takes them so long to respond to each other. By the time they actually do figure they're out... they're just waiting for the, his friend Chewbacca yeah. <laughs> to oh, get into God. a fight. But it was literally... It was just... Um, by the time they actually realized, oh, we should probably ask the other person to dance, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, no, fight at a rave, okay. which came out of so, nowhere. So this is another thing. This is another theory for me where I'm like... Because they keep showing things also that don't play out, right? Such as, like, later on when Chewbacca friend is, like... Almost fucking um, Margo on the churro stand at the and theme park. Points at her. And like points he's gonna at do something, her. Right? But nothing ever happened. Right? Um, to the point where, like, part of me had this theory where I was like, is every single thing that happens in this movie, like, completely set up, including, like, Margo being in on it? I literally thought when Margo came to the door by the end of the movie, she was gonna, like, pretend to cry and then be like, sorry. You know what? You know? Called? What? Paranoia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think every girl is just gonna come to my door crying and then betray me. <laughs> Stab me in the back, literally. Uh, Point to me okay. and then like have it go nowhere. Yeah. So the the eventual party, this rave starts to like collapse in on itself. With and immediately the cops also rage. show up during the full breakout with their helicopters. Yeah. Like it's like. But even then, so, is like, that coincidence that a fight right? broke out and the helicopters just showed up? But <laughs> even then, like as the like the rage party is starting and the rave is ending, right? <laughs> people are like rushing in as like fifteen people are like, "We should get out." Everyone else is like, "We should fight." There's a, yeah. There's like, a guy climbing like a speaker, like he's rage against the machine at the uh, MTV at Movie the Awards. Like collapses. Like, <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. There's, yeah. there, um, and of course, when you hear police helicopters, where do you go? I always go to the roof. Right. <laughs> yeah, they won't find me there. Yeah. Uh, but that's where they go, and and so Margot and uh, Nicole get split up and go with their uh, individual guys that they okay, like. But they all go up on the roof, and like Reese and what's his butt, Cl- David, go one way. Yeah. They and climb down, like, back into, like, oh, we're going to climb down the fire escape that leads directly into to the, the exit. To the flow of people. Is, yeah, yeah that there's and probably the a police like, barricade. We're going over to the other side of the building where we just have to jump five feet into right. a trash chute or something like that. Like, it doesn't make sense where they both go. Because no. they're both like, see you later, taking different routes. Nope. And so uh, David and Nicole have their first little, like, talk and this is where she's like is this that car that like blow like blew up and i was like well one no that was a pinto yeah not this i was like Uh, that's but but also he like he's like the car yeah it is shot in right (laughs) (laughs) i hope that's not insensitive but that's literally what i first thought no it's not it's not that guy but like it's still it's a convertible and i don't even think pintos were convertibles no they were um but also, like, but he doubles down on on it. He's like, "Yeah, I got it. I got it for a good deal," you know. It's <laughs> and the gayest thing, though, because he's. Yeah, I'm saying this as a gay man because this is what I do with objects. I'm like, like I used to do it with music, to where it's like, "Oh, its play count is so low. I need to listen to it five more times so it feels loved." It's just technology because he's That's like, "Sad." It looks sad. <laughs> I know. I was a really bad high schooler. <laughs> um, but he was like, it wasn't being purchased by anyone else, so I had to buy this car. It's not its fault. It's just how it was built. <laughs> Which is like a Christian that hates gays but is trying to make excuses to, for loving gays. Like, it's not its fault. It's just a human that loves the same kind of human. It shouldn't be that way, but I'm going to love it. <laughs> like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> but also, I feel like I just condemn <laughs> putting gays down. <laughs> You're like, it's okay if you say that it's wrong to like dick, but it's how they were made, and I can't help it. I mean, the Lord sometimes makes mistakes. We should kill it all. <laughs> I think I did just I think you did. I think I just condemned killing my own people. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right, and the end of Bombs Away. Three, two, one, bye. <laughs> uh, so, wow. I will say, she, she, they have a conversation. It doesn't, I can't, I, I know what it basically the gist it's was, like, but I also couldn't understand it because he's whispering through this whole film, and then he's, she's he's, like, "I have a curfew." His orphanage. Right, and then he's like, "Well, not his orphanage." He says he comes his from orphan- a wealthy yeah. couple, and he just moved out here. Right, not the truth. 
But then she's like, I got to be home in like 30 minutes. And then he grabs his, her watch and is like, dial it back. That to be fair, time. to be fair, um, really if, romantic gesture. It, honestly, I mean, to be fair, if this happened to me. Uh, I'd cream. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, smooth move, David. Yeah, I thought you were going to say, I was like, sploosh move, David. I mean, yeah. It was a sploosh No, for, 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 in this moment, because yeah. he does it twice, right? We'll get to the other one, and that's ridiculous. Like, that one's stupid. Yeah, but the first time, like, if somebody's like, I really got to go, and somebody, like, wound the watch back and was like, do you? I'd be like, fuck no, I don't. I yeah. Like, let's do this, oh. you know? Like, I mean, oh. because it's like... Oh. You could still, in that moment, you as a person were like, you could either be like, sploosh, yeah. or be like, no, I really have to go. You I know, think. and then that person, because he is so gentleman-like, like, basically all the way up in until the moment, Gary moment he is, yeah, he yeah, is yeah. right? <laughs> until, yeah. Oh, the kicking him or the neck moment? <laughs> no, no, the the first instance. Okay, because yeah. I was like... Breaking the f- his neck was probably not the best moment <laughs> to hate him. Probably another one after Right? That. But, okay, so we're just going to – we'll speed through a bit. Um, yeah, so he starts picking her up at school. Yeah. At first, it's fine. It's okay. But then he picks her up, like, the second time at school, and she hugs Gary, her, like, best friend that's, like, probably obviously gay at this point. Yeah. He, was, he wasn't even, like, remotely into Nicole. He was just, like – I love girls. Well, like this how hasn't. I loved girls in high school. Wait, this hasn't happened yet, has it? No, no, in the in the movie. No, this oh, hasn't happened yet because oh, yeah. they haven't had sex yet. No, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, wait, hold on, because yeah. we haven't done roller coaster yet. We haven't done. Wait oh, a minute. That was a fast you that get was you fast get. <laughs> so, rewind, rewind. Yeah. So oh, the Nicole, tape broke. Yeah. Nicole goes <laughs> home and um. Her stepmother. This is how we know she's her stepmother because she's like, "You're home late. We'll talk about it tomorrow." Right. And then she goes, "Take off all that makeup. You look like a slut." Right. And I was it's like, like "You don't even say that Whoop. to kids that are yours. <laughs> you don't say that to like best friends." I think that like, was to establish mean. that it isn't her daughter. Yeah. They're like, and "We got to double down on the even, fact that she doesn't care." Even her makeup on that night, I was like, "Oh, it was okay. a nice natural light." It was look. all right. I was like, "That's not as heavy." A yeah, I mean, it wasn't like she rave was girl. Three pounds of makeup is what she said. Like, yeah, I was like, no. Yeah, it was. I mean, she didn't look like Mimi from Drew Carey show, right? Oh, Mimi. There's no getting past Mimi. Yeah. Um, I love Mimi. Uh, yeah, sure. Anyway, um, <laughs> so now, um, they, they do uh, uh, two come down by Bush. They do a montage of them dating. Right? There's this like thing where they kind of look over and they see Chewbacca <laughs> and Margot. <laughs> From this cloud, taking me all this time to find out what it means. It was a nice like, yeah, reminder yeah. that all of these songs <laughs> happened when I was about five years old. I was like, I love these songs. I was so young, I shouldn't have loved these songs. I, I like the moment, like, there is a moment where, um, like, they're playing pool, and they look over, and there's Margo and Chewbacca bas- uh, fucking in public almost, right? right? And he, like, looks to her, and he's like, that could be us, but you're a virgin. But you suck. <laughs> um, and then by the end of this little montage, he's like, "I want to meet. I want to meet your family." And uh, she's like, "Oh, that's adorable!" And takes him yeah. to meet the family like immediately. But Nicole has been grounded because of her the, curfew breaking. The, yeah, the first time. And so for their next date, Margo's there. David shows up too, but Nicole has to finish her chores because of the grounding. Right. So David comes over. Yeah. Right. And and this is one of a couple times where I'm like, David has a like tiny for the mom. Well, that too. But yeah, no. he he actually mentions that. No, he has a like tiny shrunken yeah. sweater. Oh. No, stop it. <laughs> he has a tiny shrunken sweater <laughs> problem. A sh- shrunken dick sweater okay, problem. he has a shrunken sweater problem. Okay, I'm not gonna say tiny because you're just gonna keep inserting it. Um, like David did. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Uh. No. But they do. He has a. Yeah. No. His. Have you noticed it? Like the of back his of his shirts, shirts. Too small. Like, and something's always tucked in. I was like, is that the wireless mic he's wearing? Like, is this a reality show? Like, there's something tucked in the back. It's that... no, no, Jonathan. What? It is the 1995 French tuck. Oh, in the back. <laughs> But yeah, they're like very tiny. Like the sweaters are just. It was the French tuck before the French tuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so he is super smooth and charming to every single person. Oh, yeah, he would right? win the family over. And I think, he, I mean, in this moment, he almost kind of wins the dad over, too. Yeah. You know? And then uh, the dad goes into work um, in, in his office, and, and, and this is where I love this, where he's like, hey, where's the bathroom? And, like, you can clearly see, like, it's the thing that's glowing green yeah. behind me. Like, it is it's so... It's the thing right there. There. But also so out of place with the rest of the house. Like, that oh, bathroom yeah. is, like, lime green. Bathroom, but also, why would the bathroom be in the office? The first floor ba- bathroom should be, like, maybe it's Maybe it's a first floor, uh, like, guest bedroom that got turned into an office. Like, that's what you're choosing to pick on? No, but that's the best <laughs> excuse you've made that I would make <laughs> yeah. normally. I was like, oh, God, you're turning into me. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> uh, and that was on the spot. Like, I didn't write that I down. I know. That was it. really good. Like, because uh, I, di- I didn't even pass. I- me, I'm like, well, there's just a bathroom, whatever. Right. right? And this is where um, Margot comes in and is straight up. This is another uh, subplot that American is never American beautying. Yeah, dad. this is a subplot that also is never played out though. I sounded really whiny saying that. No, she's an American it's fine. beautying. Yeah, but, like she is. She literally is like, why don't you come to the fair with us? Right. Check out some prizes. <laughs> right? Eat some sweets and like. At one, she didn't actually do it, but I expect no, her to she lift did. up her skirt. Well, she to be bent like, over enough to see a cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is playing the game, right? But this is the one and only time that this subplot is even addressed. Yeah, right. And cause, because David breaks it, David goes, "Hey Nicole, bring me a Coke." <laughs> yeah, right. and Nicole because like, I think even he's aw- awkward about it. Right away, slave master. Like. <laughs> Right. She like gave in to those like demands right off the bat. Right. I was like, oh, that's not good. And her dad does catch on to it, so I was like proud of her dad. Yeah, like, but oh. also like this is because um, uh, Stephen throughout the whole film likes to like bite on his glasses. Yeah. So hey, this is tasty. yeah, this is another moment where it's like biting down hard. Oh god! And David's like, yeah, you know you want it, you know. And uh, but ne- this never plays out. Honestly, Ever. if David and Steven fucked, I think their uh, problems <laughs> would not have existed. Right? Like, there's a lot of gay energy suppressed you out of those two. You having problems with your marriage? Let me touch your prostate, show you how to fix those. Yeah. And it's like, oh! <laughs> and that's also what they would have done. Have, oh! you, have you seen The Perfect Night? <laughs> not The Perfect... The per- I, I mixed Boogie Nights and The Perfect Storm. <laughs> have you seen Boogie Nights? I was in that film. <laughs> Did you see the Dirk Diggler? The Perfect Night. Big dicks on the open ocean. <laughs> That's a really big dick. That is a perfect night. Being on the water with a big one. Yeah. Perfect night. So. <laughs> That's support. God damn it. Oh, uh, yeah. Funny. So, um, Stephen goes, hey, my daughter has a curfew. Make sure he's back. Uh, she's back in time. He's like, yeah, no problem. Right, and then he, he, he gets a phone call, and he spins the clock back, and I'm like, David, that's not how time works. No, he fingers like, the clock back. Yeah, <laughs> okay, because it's foreshadowing. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm gonna turn it back with these two fingers. <laughs> gonna need a half an hour for her to climax. Yeah. Um. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he spins the dial back a half an hour on the clock, and I'm like, David. I think he has other clocks yeah. in the room. He's like he's looking a at a computer screen. He's got a computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which he doesn't look at. He doesn't look at the computer. He takes off his watch. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is a great happy circumstance. <laughs> You're Jesus. right. And then nobody also, like his wife hasn't come in and been like, come on. And you're, you know, hey, it's, it's time for bed. Letterman. Yeah, exactly. Like no one bothered him at all about time. <laughs> right. And I was like, Except for the guy who's like, hey, your deadline was midnight, asshole. Right. Like even which like, I don't think anybody else, like if you're working, you're typing. slaving away. Nobody else is expecting right? it until like, the morning. Even like graphicking on his <laughs> Macintosh. Like I had like in uh in second grade or third grade, we had a Macintosh like that. And it was like it always displayed time. Yeah, yeah. You were never like, where did a clock go? By like the way, on Apple I, iPhones now. Yeah, I mean, by the way, anybody who um, is listening to this day of and was expecting it like on time, sorry, I was a half an hour late because yeah. Jarrett turned back the clocks. I did. I, <laughs> I groundhog this situation. Yeah. That's not how Groundhog Day works. <laughs> no, I I came out. I saw my shadow and I was like, ah! A half an hour more of yeah, winter. Yeah. A half an hour more of episode <laughs> delay. 
So. Oh, I thought you meant Groundhog Day. I was like, that is not how Groundhog well, Day no, works. It, that's what I am. Ground, not that Groundhog Day, but right. the, the normal Groundhog Day. I am the Gay Hog Day. Oh, gross. I just gave myself a horrible name. Yeah, no, it wasn't even good. Gay Hog Day. <laughs> anytime, anytime an episode releases late, it's going to be a Gay Hog Day. <laughs> okay. Because I'm hogging all of everything. We'll all right. That. So, Save my ass. Had you ever seen this movie before? No, but I actually did really love it. Like, yeah, no, it was a lo- it, it, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, right, done. I love it. Recommend it. Yeah. Great, good. Go. No, on. because it's one of those films where, because this is the iconic scene coming up. This is like yeah. I had never seen it, right? And it was one of those things where anybody is like, "You didn't see Fear? Like, oh my God, the roller coaster scene! You gotta see the roller coaster scene, yeah. right?" And okay, <laughs> um, because if. Because that's all I heard growing up and stuff is like, you got to see the roller coaster scene. And I'm like, well, what about the rest of the movie? Now I understand why nobody was like, you got to see the rest of the movie <laughs> because the ending is just insane. But this scene. Okay, so David, um, Chewbacca, Marco, and Nicole all go to the fair. Um, I guess there's probably a pier yeah, that we don't know about. It's a pier. That, it is yeah, a pier. is in, in Seattle or something. And... um uh, this is like Wild Horses is playing, right? And um, <laughs> I, it, what if it was like something else? It was like Kiss Me Beneath the Milky Twilight. twilight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's this Wild Horses, which also plays doubly in this film. And yeah, I don't know how to sing <laughs> that one, but um, they get on the Six roller coaster. On the Kiss Me. Yes, it's a great song. Yeah, we just went through that. I know, but I'm just saying. Okay. Um, I was talking about Wild Horses. <laughs> oh, that song? Yeah, I don't care about that song. So uh, they're climbing up the the incline of the, the roller click, coaster. Click, click part of the roller the coaster. incline. And <laughs> click, 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 click. It's a lot. What roller coasters do you go on? They're like a very, very slow build. I'm over Click, explaining click, it. click, click, click. <laughs> God, I normally go. The on, wait time I... for this coaster is so click. long. Click, click, because it takes yeah, you a yeah, while to climax. I get it. Oh, I like a slow <laughs> build. Yeah. But he, she even like kind of she finishes like at the top of the hill. Oh yeah, for sure. But well, then, th- then so she goes up. They're building it. Like he's slipped in already. And like as it's going down he the hill, slipped the... in already. <laughs> yes, because she she basically slides. He's got his hand on her leg, and yeah. she as they're going up the hill, she slides her hand down into the naughty parts. The crevice. Yeah, <laughs> the liney crevice. Yeah. Um, and then... and he's already going for it. Yeah. Oh, they're pound pounding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hands. But like as it's going down the decline, uh, <laughs> as declines you often do go down, um. But it's like the, it's called the drop. It's like <laughs> Jared it's does like, not know roller coasters at yeah. all. Apparently, but she's like she's definitely like o facing it. But the camera's like she's gonna injure you when she gets off. Literally, she she has a neck problem after this ride. But it was just because of the roller coaster. Like the o the o the big o doesn't have anything to do with it. No, like. But she, like, the camera's even, like, we can't. I just like to imagine that there's someone out there, like, there was, like, an executive being, like, like, just calling up. Fingering on a roller coaster sexy, don't you know? Mr. Flags, call your brothers. We have to have an emergency meeting. (laughs) People are blasting on our coaster. (laughs) Finger blasting. (laughs) Oh, cool. I guess we'll just right. name it Twisted Colossus. <laughs> the Ninja was our big one. Yeah. <laughs> not really. Maybe silent, but deadly? I don't know. Uh, no, that's it's... a fart, not... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe sometimes fingering silent and deadly. I got it! We'll do blast coasters! Ain't nobody gonna have time to finger! There's no drops! <laughs> blast coasters, gross. <laughs> yeah, so they do that. It's we have a all goddamn romantic. epidemic! Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the they're just fucking fingering each other. Two, two nights later, her dad is like, "Hey, stepwife, I gotta go out of town." But like, what if we went out of town together? Can Got I backtrack for a second? Sexy room. Yeah. If you actually did try that, <laughs> please write oh. us. Like, oh. we won't reveal your name. I just want to know: Did anybody? You did know, you, somebody tried it. Two finger coast blast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. But let us know. Yeah. Did you ride the rails? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gross. I hate it. Moving. On. 
So, yeah, her dad uh, uh, is like, I got called away for a call, but I want you to come with me to Vancouver or wherever, Quebec. Right. Uh, Canada place, and we can rent that one <laughs> sexy room. Mm-hmm. And the mo- the stepmom's like, okay. And they leave them alone. They're like, oh, don't have any guests over. Don't tell anyone the house passcode. Because, like, right. that obviously has to red herring it through itself in the whole film. <laughs> yeah. And then she calls her boyfriend, uh, David, and it, like calls him on a cell phone, which I was like, "Ooh, shocker!" Yeah, it, for After for being a poor kid has shocker, a cell phone. A <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So then he, they like have people in the car, and he's like, "I gotta finish a job because he's part of the mob." Another generally. subplot that yeah. is never explained. Never Something explained. about a dog. Yeah, being like they're here for the dog. They have I'm like, dog what dog? Problems in the, their game. <laughs> what is and what? And they live in. Oh my god, have we gotten there Seattle. yet? No. Oh, the the house. Not yet. The frat house slash junk house. I don't think so. It's okay. All right. So, um, yeah, he's like, oh, oh mind if I this. come after this job though? And she's like, sure. So the password's one, two, three, four, or something very like easy to remember like that. It's literally only a one, a four, and a three, and a two. Um, it could no, be one, yeah, four, it's three, two. It, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I think it is one, four, three, two. Yeah. Yeah, so or she's two, like, three. Just enter that and out of come five. into my bedroom, obviously. <laughs> yeah. so just he, enter that, then yeah. enter me. Yeah. Yeah. So he comes into her bedroom. He completely undresses. And then um, he. Uh, well, well, first he's like searching through all her stuff. Yeah. He finds her daddy's Wait. girl bracelet. And then he takes off his shirt. And did you see that he has a third nipple? Well, yeah, it's Mark Wahlberg's third nipple. You Does didn't it... know about that? No. Yeah. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Huh. Mark Wahlberg has three nipples. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. I didn't know. God, I'm so gay. I didn't know. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> but so, yeah, he's, like, looking through it. <laughs> he's, like, listening. Then, God, yeah. they talked about the nipple. That's all they ever talk about, the nipple. <laughs> um. Yeah, so then he, he like... To slides the blanket off and right. then he like he well, she wakes like her wakes up. up and he's just like standing over her like boom oh, boom he wakes up and he's like slapping a hard dick on her face basically <laughs> and then he's like come here you're half awake I gotta undo your bra yep. like, takes her bras off immediately slides off her underwear and then they like yep pound town it yep and then yeah yep then the next day. After this, picking her up from school, he's he's gonna Fine. pick her up from school, and she walks out with her friend Gary. Uh, Gary's like, it's not Gary, it's Gary. Gary, why? Why do you think he's gay? Uh, he shows no attraction to women. Uh, and but he's actually pretty good. He has great bone. Uh, okay, so this is a bone structure. well, this is an underdeveloped character of the friend zone trope. Also, well, it's also just the '90s friend zone trope, right. where it's not even friend zone. But I don't think he even is interested in her. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He's not. Mm, but I he's... can 100% guarantee from my <laughs> point of view of things that was just my pretty blonde friend that I just wanted to be around because she's so pretty. Sure. Or maybe he respects boundaries. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> say he's gay. I'm okay. Say he's real gay. Well, he wasn't even like. Oh, you know, like, you deserve a respectable man. Right. Well, he gives her a hug, and this is where David comes out of nowhere. And basically, like, <laughs> he gives her a two-second hug and is like, okay, bye. And then David and comes out. David just, like, you know that, like, ground. mob, like, yeah. club that they knock people in the back of the yeah. head with? That's what it seems like. He's just, like, takes him from behind and then just starts just pummeling him. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, David, I mean, honestly... In the grand scheme of things, dude, like think it through. Like you were good. Oh, you could, yeah. you literally could have had Nicole for months until you showed signs of insanity. <laughs> like, but you just it, as soon as you went to Pound Town, then it was time to pound on other people too. I guess it was like when you see your crazy homeless ex that didn't get the like. You have exes that are homeless. Give me a second. Okay, <laughs> your crazy homeless ex that didn't get the. Uh, the contract she wanted and didn't get to stay in your room so now she's stalking your new girlfriend and she's beating up the cars that are in are you, are, what what are you doing right now are you doing a bit 50 shades 
Oh, I'm like, are you darker. doing a Carrie Underwood song? No, are you Fifty doing single white female no. swim fan? What are you doing? The ex girlfriend <laughs> from Fifty Shades Darker. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so forgettable. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm she sorry. Really is. Honestly, I forgot that part, so I just remember it right now. Literally, I had to read. I was like, did she blow her brains out in that movie? I don't even know. Nah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's right, because he called her, like, master and something and made her yeah, sick. Yeah, she was like, the master will be mad. Hey, guys, remember when we did Fifty Shades Darker? Right. We're doing it again right now. Well, no, this <laughs> did seem like a 90s version of Fifty, but, like, without less money. With less money. Mm, I wouldn't money. say that. Mm, think about it. It'll hit you. I mean, there's parallels, but not, yeah. I mean, not dark enough because, like, the romance fantasy portion yeah. kind of fades away real quick. Oh, yeah. So he like right the, here. Yeah. He beats the shit out of the guy. While he's doing that, he, like, elbows Reese in the eye and gives her a black eye. Right. And then Reese is getting ready the next morning, and she's like, oh, shit, that is a black eye. Mm-hmm. And the mom comes in, and she's like, or the stepmom comes in, and she's like, what happened? And she's like, uh, an elbow to the face during volleyball. And you like, don't even play volleyball. Makeup tricks. <laughs> you don't even go yeah. here. Right. <laughs> and she, like, shows her makeup tricks and stuff. She hugs her dad goodbye. Like, yeah. It's just kind of So like, now mom and stepdaughter have resolved their problems mid-movie. Right? Yeah. Yeah, weirdly, right? And then, like, the whole, like, speech that she was giving the dad when the dad um basically confronted her for calling his daughter a slut, like, all that of being, like, you need to be tougher on her. You need to show her tough love. Yeah. All that's just out the door. Like, she's like, did you want her to, like, sleep with David behind your back? Because that's what was going to happen. So, right. like, I'm going to probably sleep with him, too. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's what, that's how that goes down later. Yeah. Um, and then there's like a faux breakup between David and Nicole. Right. And uh, this is where this is where I'm like, Ugh, David, again, you're not – like it makes me sound weird. I'm like, you're not thinking this whole stalker thing through. Cause, it's true though. Yeah, like, because, because I'm like, David, you don't leave – notes in her locker because that would prove that you knew what her where her locker was <laughs> like you're an idiot yeah. and she's an idiot too well she actually does not go and meet him yeah. where where he's like meet me at largo and he's just sitting there listening to his own music from marky mark and the funky bunch his own marky mark yeah. song. yo now's the time <laughs> to break so it down bad. the rhythm and the rhyme <laughs> All right. Good vibration. it's not that song but it is it is his song. He's listening to his yeah. own music it's in insane. the bar alone, right? That's another scene where I was like, "Ho, oh, whoa, I had my sound up, right? And then it just went away. Yeah. So she does not meet him there. Um, and so he decides to uh, – that Margot and Nicole are hanging out by the pool, gossiping, doing girl things, painting nails, when, like, the whole gang just shows up, right? Um, oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> we need to establish the gang, the gang their the house, house yeah. right? It's what? It's like a drug den. <laughs> so Margo's... It's a meth den. Oh, by the way, were they smoking meth or was that supposed to be weed? Uh, I think it was meth. I I've think so, too. i like that. No. Sorry, Mom. Like, usually, no, because usually weed, any bowl, yeah. is not crystal it's clear it's not in the middle of the pipe <laughs> right like, that too sketchy yeah uh, it looks more like a kazoo yeah <laughs> i i literally was like <laughs> no, i was like i've never smoked weed like that but i guess you could smoke weed from a glass kazoo <laughs> like i was like well weird but i guess and then i was like oh no it's probably meth that thing that that i have no Missouri idea anything about for, yeah but i've never actually <laughs> partaken in i was like maybe don't actually do meth right so um uh, sorry, I I ran through no, my note. Like, I oh, ran through my notes oh. and just saw third nipple again. Okay. So, um, what happens is well, uh, no, David's well, room. Happened. Yeah, David's room is the most insane thing well, I've ever we seen. We get an establishment of all of the like the homeless gang, I guess. The who white gang. who apparently this is one of their dad's places. It's, so it's Margot's boyfriend's dad's places. Because, so Chewbacca. Yeah, Chewbacca's dad's places, <laughs> or his stepdad. But someone comes in right. as Marky Mark is sulking uh, with, like, pictures of Nicole all around his room. And they're like, no, 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 wait a minute. There is more than just that in that room. Oh. There is his own mugshot on the wall. Um, he's sleeping on a, like, military cot as if it literally is also an insane asylum that he was just like, yeah, it turned it into, like, a, you know, like a B&B now. Um, uh, there's a crucifix on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> there, um, there oh, are Chucky, Chucky dolls. Yeah. <laughs> tiny Chucky dolls. Like, I don't understand. They were like, let's just, 
let's just like we need to show he's crazy and it. i'm like you yeah. don't need this because this just this is like a whole nother level of insanity this is something completely different and he's just sitting in the dark sulking yeah. about her and it's like multiple copies of the photo booth experience they have like, yeah got extras printed and like tacked it by the way the i think I, did i look down did they actually show them in the photo booth getting shots nope okay was that in the trailer though i don't know okay because I feel like I saw it in a trailer as a child, like on a VHS attached to something else, uh. you know? And, but yeah, okay. So I'm not, I, I, because I see the, you know, the photo booth shots and then he gives them to her later too, right? So you're thinking or, of the other reason. No, the dad the sees the photo booth shots. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, uh. I was like, I swear I saw them somewhere in, and I think it's from my childhood. I think there was an uncut scene there or something. No, or, you're thinking of uh, Reese Witherspoon and Ryan... Felipe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In... Um... Uh, cruel Intentions? Yep. <laughs> exactly. You're welcome. Uh... I couldn't think of the word Cruel Intentions but, at all. But did they actually have a photo booth no, scene? No, not at all. I just wanted to like, embarrass you. Yeah. Uh, it didn't happen at all no. in, in, in Cruel Intentions. Yeah. Um, Anywho, yes. So he's got all these photos on his wall, and one of the guys comes in, and he's like, Hey, man, we got to go do this job. And he's like, I'm not coming. Because Marky Wall is, yeah. like, real intense. No, I'm not coming. And then the guy's like, <laughs> Hey, man, you better shape up, because once the guy that's yeah. making Marky when his dad's Basically, comeback, the quote is, yeah. when his old man gets back into town, we're all going to be on our ass. Right? And I'm like... Are you Why sure? Why did you spray paint the walls, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Why did you shit everywhere? Right? So, um, so now because uh, Nicole doesn't want to see David, she's like all moody and upset and crying. And um, stepmom goes in to console her, and dad goes in to like uh, do the same thing and finds the condom wrapper on the floor. And probably not the best time to, one, react to this at all, you know. Uh, not at all. And then, two, to have this reaction. Like, read the room, dude. Right? Like, because he basically just doubles down on the, like, I'm your father. I'm going to tell you where to go. But does not address the, like, I know what you've done. Yeah. Just because also, like, what if she was like, oh, I wonder what a condom looks like, you know? Like, I used to do that. Uh, I, I got a condom from, like, health class right unrolled that shit was like put it on was like yeah look that's what's going on you know she could have literally i mean because they pass them out to everyone in my class you know for him to double down (laughs) this hard and be like i'm your fucking father i'm gonna do you know and you're just like uh (laughs) like she just tried to put on a condom jeez oh yeah (laughs) maybe she did a little glove thing yeah uh or she blew it up like a balloon (laughs) or she's just got a real big one yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, thick one. Regardless, like it was almost like I'm your father, and I'm the one you should be sleeping with, and <laughs> like he's but just real, over. Yeah. yeah, right. It's so he's daddy's little high. girl weird in this moment, and but also just like dude, the what should have been is a conversation of like, hey, I found something, and I just want to have a a talk about it, you know. The adult talk. Right. Because that's what happened to me. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. They just found one in the trash. <laughs> And smart. I, right? Comes no, that's a great smart. story, actually. They found one, one in the trash, and they're like, we have to have a conversation. I was like, it's not me. What it was yours? And my mom was like, your father had a vasectomy a couple years He's ago. <laughs> He's celibate. We haven't in years. It's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. Don't talk about it. <laughs> we live in a loveless marriage. Right? No, no. Sorry, Mom. Uh, <laughs> No, but true story. Like, and but there was that was the talk, and it was actually a funny talk because they're like, "We're catching you in a lie immediately," yeah. you know. Um, but that's how this should have went down. It really should have. And so, um, after this, David just kind of shows up with his gang yeah. at um, uh, uh, Margot and Nicole or at the pool and. I thought this was Margot's house, but it's not. It's actually Nicole's house. So yeah. somehow, that, some, this gang keeps getting in okay, So I actually, <laughs> to this gated community. It looked very weird because it didn't look like Nicole's house. So 
it looked like it started out at Margot's house. <laughs> yes. And that's when they like. And it reconciled. wasn't Nicole's house until dad gets home. No, literally. I honestly think that because it didn't look like the pool at Nicole's house. No. So I think they reconciled at Margot's house because Margot's mom goes out of town all the time. Okay. And then uh, Nicole talks to her mom or her stepmom. Also, how did David get in when he wanted to sleep with her earlier? Like how did not he to the house, the not to the house. To the security guard that we haven't really established. I like to imagine that the same gate has the same passcode as their house. Well, you have to pass by the guard. So you still enter a password. You just got to say hi. Know the info. Yeah, I. To me, it felt like they were the only house behind that gate. Maybe he was asleep. <laughs> I don't really fully yeah, totally know. I don't know. But but uh, what I'm trying to establish is a, yeah. a is a a pattern in which to try to figure out yeah. how they keep getting in because I don't know how they got in later. Well, they Either. went to a, a different road off of the beaten path. So what's the point in having a, a, sec- a secure gate at all? Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, you're assuming they did that. Yeah. They could have went through the woods. No, they did go through the woods in the second part. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't see, a, I didn't see a road. They park on a different road and then walk through the woods. Oh, okay. They actually say that. I didn't hear that. So, um, I don't care. I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they reconcile, uh, reconcile, whatever. And uh, then the dad comes home, Steve, and he's right. like, oh, why is my wi- my wife being thrown into the pool by mm-hmm. my daughter's abusive yep. boyfriend? And he's like, what, did you, what is he doing here? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's going well, on in his own head. But that is what's going on because like, yeah, the mom's like, chill dramatic. out. Yeah, did you want like, her to sneak uh, out? Throw me in right? the pool, hunky 20-year-old. <laughs> I know. <gasps> Right, like she's quivering at that and point. and then also this is weird too because like this is where David is just he now doesn't give a fuck yeah like he like, is making out with her wherever. while staring down the dad being like you want some of this too like, I was like it is it's a little gay <laughs> yeah. but that's where I think the music's oh, like ni ha yeah. ni lo no spa <laughs> it's just in his head like no so then. Yeah, I'm full on gross Hard. make out. Oh, gross okay, make yeah. out. Like st- while he's staring at his dad, I'm like, at least close yeah. your eyes and make out with right. a girl, or like kiss her, and then when you're done, open them and look at him and be like, "Bitch, you wish." No, instead it's like it's you like, wish this was you. You wish you were making out with your own right? daughter, and it's like that's not the message we should be sending across. Right. So <laughs> after this, uh, we he confronts him. Right. Yes. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire movie this might be the most insane thing i've ever heard come out of mark Wahlberg's mouth um in a film so mark Wahlberg is waiting outside of school to pick up reese right but our lovely dad william peterson is like we're just going back to actor names now yeah i know uh (laughs) steven rolls up to david and is like hey Meet me around the corner. We got to talk. Right. And it's like, that's already sketchball change on right. Steven's part. <laughs> on the dad's sketch part. Like, change. It is. Because it's like, right. why do you got to meet him around the corner? Why don't you just say, hey, get the fuck out. Get lost. Right. No. Well, it's this whole man to man thing. Yeah, Macho's yeah, yeah. Underrated. Yeah, yeah. And then they meet her on the corner. This is where your lovely exchange. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I have it. And we're going to play it because it's. I, I, I don't know. Like, in the grand scheme of everything that Mark Wahlberg has ever said, monologues, things like that, um, it's something, I don't know. It, it's, it's insanity at best, honestly. So, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. David, I don't want to beat around the bush. I came to tell you that you're going to stop seeing Nicole. Now, either you're as smart as you think you are and you'll just go away, or else you're going to make things a lot harder on yourself than they have to be. You know, Steve, you're really not a faggot. What? No, I'm serious. You seem like a pretty solid guy. You should lighten up on yourself. We're not talking about me. We're talking... Yes, we are. So that's what this whole thing's about, Steve. Your inadequacies, your fears. You just wait a minute. Now listen to me. See, I'm hip to your problems. All of them. I know you abandoned Nicole when she needed you most. I licked her sweet tears. I know about things coming apart at work. Maybe you fucking lost it in that department. I also...
also know you ain't keeping up, so to speak, your end of the bargain with the missus. Because if you were, she wouldn't be all over my stick. But relax, Steve. We're friends. <laughs> we're practically family. I'm sorry. I would have shot him right then and there. Because it was like, <laughs> you don't know me. But also, like, God, he's so cocky. Like, also, maybe talk at a hearing volume and don't be like, hey, John. I, I need to tell you. I think that you're doing a really <laughs> bad job. You need to step up and wake up for me. It's like, God, just let me know what <laughs> just you're Just make saying. out already. They yeah. are face to face. Oh, they are, there's like, so much sexual tension. Also, God would definitely look at jump your sec- on Steven's bones. Look at your sexual inanity, Steven. Uh, <laughs> if he like, if he reached over and started like rubbing his genitals as he was like, you're not performing well at work, I would have been like, this is a gay porn. I 100% believe I it. don't know why our Mark Wahlberg impression is half Homestar Runner. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Uh, it's so, it's, it's I'm Mark really Wahlberg. I, I could turn this into a gay movie. I'm okay yeah. with it. Right? But I just, like, everything about it and the way he performs it, I'm just like, damn. Like, this is, it is it is a hardcore scene. Like, yeah. And this is the thing I wanted to press is as much as it, it it's an enjoyable film and and there's a lot of ridiculous moments. But, like, literally... Mark Wahlberg and Reese Witherspoon, like, they do sell it. Oh, they sell it so good. Yeah. Because, so after this scene, um, Mark Wahlberg starts hitting himself in the chest. And it's a really oh, yeah, this is the scene. scene. He beats himself in the chest, like, with his own fist, of sort of doing, like, a battle, like, I'm ready for battle, smacking himself in the same spot, like, punching himself. Yeah, they do it in Wolf of Wall Street. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And then um, Reese gets word of it, and she's like, Eh, I'm not a happy dad. Like, you said he did this to me, but now I'm mad because you did it to him. Right. And because you did it to him, I'm going to run out with him when he stops by the house. Yeah. Basically, escapes with him. She runs off. And they have a talk of whole, like, apologies and cutesies and stuff. And then I think I blinked. (laughs) Because all of a sudden, she's driving her own car. And she's at his grunge house. So they, like, make up. Um, Yeah. Okay, you're you're right. You're right. Yeah, because, okay, so. She's parked at his house all of a sudden with her own SUV looking through a window. Well, there is a moment where she gets dropped off or something by somebody. At her own house. Right. And then is going to be like. She's going to go there. inside and then inst- and they're like good luck with your dad or whatever and then instead is like oh let me uh just go steal the jeep and go to uh Mark's house. Yeah. To David's house. Yeah. So she goes there, she sees Margot riding on her Chewbacca. Chewbacca, right? <laughs> and then Mark Wahlberg comes up and he's like I'm going to Fuck this, <laughs> right? And they're like, "What?" And he's like, "So you want to tell him you want to fuck me?" Yeah, like tell tell him you want to fuck so me. So aggressive and scary. Right? And right? then like he basically rapes her best friend. Yeah, right. Well, because like I I guess because I uh, the thing about it is that in this moment I guess it's more revealed that Margot is more of like a dick tease than she really is like actually going to go through with any of the shit that she does like to Steven or to Chewbacca or anything like this well, because be a flirt. Cause, well meaning because the first time he's like tell this tell this guy how much you want to fuck me and she's like yeah I want to fuck you right and he's like no I want to hear you say it and pulls her hair and then she just immediately starts crying she like hey! start. she does the first the because she's he makes her repeat it basically three times huh. right and the first time she's like kind of smiling almost as if, if it's like yeah because that would be hot to like yeah and then as soon as he grabs her hair she's like <laughs> I, I guess I do right and you're just yeah. like what what happened like and then immediately he takes her puts him over puts her over his arm slaps that ass and then Chewbacca's like yeah take that fucking slut anyway as if it's like well it seems like this is your guy's thing well, but also I don't blaming. know what their thing is their thing is victim blaming <laughs> making the victim feel like oh you asked for it so you're going to get it no so I then, meant I meant oh. just in as a gang 
Yeah, like, no, that's is their thing dogs? That's is their a, thing no. trashing houses? Is their thing, I don't know, sleeping with each other's girls? All but of the Nicole's above. off limits? I don't All know. All of the above. <laughs> They're just bad humans. Yeah, I, I guess. Right? <laughs> So then he rapes her, but uh, Nicole sees it, and she runs off. She goes home. She speeds in reverse like 60 miles per hour and threads the needle on that gate. Yeah, she (laughs) threads the needle across a bridge. I was like, whoa, girl, okay, professional driver. 16, professional driver. So then, like, next scene, she's playing games with her brother. Yes, and this is where Margot comes in. And, and tries to, like, be like, I don't know what's happening. No, 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 before this... Margot oh, says one of the sexual, most disturbing yeah. lines. I thought Nectarine was disturbing, but no, this one takes the cake in the entire movie. She goes to the little brother and says, and I quote, when are you going to grow up so I can ravage you? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, this girl will take any dick. She just I... got raped and is still ready yes. for dick. <laughs> But I would say in that time, it would just be like, oh, you're so handsome. Why can I kiss you? This is like like, hearing this is also where I'm like, I'm not quite sure it was fully rape. Like, I think it was more regret sex. Like, I just I don't know. I wouldn't say that. Like, I no. just because I'm like, no, she acts like nothing just happened the night before. There's not even a sense of had a traumatic thing happen to you to where you just want to ignore it and just keep moving on. Meaning she is face to face with the girlfriend of the person who just did this. And there's not even a sense of like, hey, is everything okay? Your best friend that you can't admit to it, that your best friend is dating them. There's a lot of hold on. We're not talking about realism here. We're talking about a film and a film, a film would uh, at least show a hint of like, is everything okay? Uh, yeah, like, no, just brushing it off. I ex- and she's trying. She's not brushing it off. She's trying to ignore it completely because she doesn't want to believe it happened. But a movie would present it. Hmm. Almost any other movie would present it I as a sense of uncomfortability. S- even then, I don't know. We can't say that's not how someone would react. I just, I just think they didn't even think about it. <laughs> it's just how it was interpreted in the yeah. film. But I don't think we can do a victim blaming thing here. I'm not. There was nothing about victim blaming. Don't even go there. It was I was not talking to make excuses. I, it was not trying to make excuses for the, no. It was not. It was not. It was not at all. And you know that it was me saying that there was not even like from an acting side or the director himself. There was not even a portrayal of a sense of like either guilt or upset or uh, even unconscious nervousness. It was like that scene was prior to something else that happened. It seemed out of order. Maybe, but in that moment, as a character, you could say that she's wanting to not say anything at all so she can hold herself composed while a child is around in order to (laughs) make it seem like she's just wanting to be normal and then talk to her friend outside of the area. This was 1996. (laughs) Not 2018. And this is 1996 where these matters still issue today. Yeah. I I told you I was going to say some racy shit. It's not racy. I'm just saying like it's because it's not it's not that people don't see it like this anymore. It's that people are choosing to ignore no and and uh, uh, my point was and I'm I'm not taking it. Yes, it doesn't play off. Right. I'll say that. It doesn't play off entirely like it, but it's also, I think it's sweeping it under the rug to say that she's not thinking it. I, or to say like, oh, she's not acting on it because I'm, back to the fact is. I'm even just saying movies, most any other movie would, would, well, would even, even if it was unconscious, it's, there'd be like a musical note. But hold on. Those are even all that. movies to where you can say, oh. And, like, we're still seeing it today in society to where it's like, oh, this is how a person should react. To where it's like, how are you going to react to being raped? Right. You're a male. You're a white male in society. Hold on. Okay. You're a white male in society. If you were raped by a woman, do you feel comfortable telling anyone else? Would I? Yeah. I'm not on trial. Fear is on trial. No, but this is what I'm saying. (laughs) What I, I just... Or do you think society would come for you being like, oh, you're a white, straight male. Shouldn't you be glad that you're having sex? No, no, they wouldn't. You're a pretty white female. You were probably asking for it is what society is going to tell that girl. Right, but we're not talking about society. No, but that's why what I'm are saying. we going? Why are we on a why are we on a soapbox right now? No, but that's what I'm saying. That's why, like, I think in this movie, she had to pretend everything was OK and everything was fine. I don't think that. 
she's trying to I don't think she's acting out of character at all in this moment because she's trying to convince herself that everything's fine. She's trying to convince herself that she's there just to be fine. She can't lose it in front of this child. She's just trying to talk to her best friend. To She's trying to get to it without alluding to it because she's in such a broken place that she never wanted to get to. I, because I, I mean, as a person I'm like okay me, with your interpretation of it. Like, that's yeah. cool. But I think that you thought more about it than this than the makers because did. Because this is what <laughs> this is what's happening. What in the movie? In the world. Oh yeah. But I mean I am not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about I fear. Know, but <laughs> we're on a platform. I know. I know. I just like we're on a platform in which it's a limited platform. I'll say it, that. Yeah, it, it, We're reaching the, 60 people, but the, 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 this the, is stuff that affects people. And I, I agree with you. And uh, it's, we are on a I'm not, movie. I am not victim blaming or anything, but oh, like, I, know. I don't, I don't. I know you're a good person and yeah, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. want this to happen to anyone. No, fuck no. If God, I, no. But it is, it's one of those things that people say, this is how you should act. This is how you should feel. But. You don't know how you're gonna feel. You don't know how you're gonna act till it hits close to home. Or I know, it hits and and I did 100% not 100 home. And I and I want to make that clear is yeah. that like I did not like try to. Uh, I'm not coming at it from a sense of realism. Yeah. I'm coming at it from a sense of like the movie tropes that we know, yes. like 50, 60 episodes in yes. at this point. And I'm not um, things that we all I'm grew up with. No, no, I know you're not mad. Like, I quit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I quit the podcast. I started. I, I'm trying to come at it from uh, and from the movies, point. right? But, and and I understand what you're saying. Like, it, and and this is this is that hard. This is that hard line, and that's we are the same on hard super line. Super touchy ground. Right, and that's that super. same hard line that I'm uh, I, I'm I'm trying to say is like, um, uh, uh, jokes versus like, are we yeah. going to put a message out there? And I don't know what our platform yeah. is in that sense because we've never we've never touched on something like this yeah in this format like it's it, it, it it's one of those things where it's like oh when we had like we had uh we had representation when we did dolomite you know like yeah. uh things like that like i don't want representation on no representation when it comes to fear of film is very right. scary and I, I i know people i have connections with people the closest i've come to it is someone pinning me up against a wall and saying you shouldn't leave because we haven't done it yet and Yikes. that's terrifying I mean but, that happens in this film, kind of. Yeah, like so. And it's, it's very scary. But yeah, it's like that person. That person was women's studies major. Uh huh. Pinned me against a wall and said, "Like we haven't done anything yet. You shouldn't be leaving." Oh, that's unfortunate. And I that's was like, like yeah. uh, <laughs> but I gotta go now. And he was like, "Oh, you're right. You do have to leave. You should. Yeah, you have every right to leave." But for a moment, <laughs> but I saw... those do- locks on the door say yeah. that you're secure. No, I saw that take over in him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. like, I'm lucky enough to say that's as far as it went. Right. And, and that's why, like, I do get a little touchy around this stuff because we don't know how people are going to react to having that post trauma of it. And you're you're right. And 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 if this was if this was real life, absolutely. Yeah, There's exactly. no determining. I was just but, yeah. I was in a moment of like, you know, these are the tropes that we've seen a million times before. A movie, yeah. even if somebody doesn't say something like there's at least a musical like note of like here's the uncomfortability, here's what's going on in her mind, you but know. Didn't she get and to this that at some point? It had to. It, yeah. it was. It had to be a little bit because more Reese Witherspoon say. confront of her, yes. right? Which would normally be. I just. Yeah. I guess what I was saying is like the movie didn't do its job to it portray that yeah, her friend felt upset, guilty, or anything. But sometimes you don't. Want right. To allude. No, so and I, I know, but like. Yeah. In a moment where it's like we need to make sure that we clearly portray yeah. that only David and his friends are the bad guy. But you. You didn't, I did not feel like, uh, and this, this sucks because it does sound like victim blaming. I did not feel like Alyssa Milano's character in the moment was a hundred percent free of guilt or I mean free of, as, you know, as the fun person. Right. When am I not the fun person? Right. Oh, I thought that was me. No, no, no. Damn it. I'm talking about myself. It isn't, yeah. But, like, as, like, when have you known me? Like, obviously, like, at work, you know me as kind of like, Bleh, but, like, anywhere else, 
barring the past week, sure. I got so sure, sure. tired and back pain. That and I after this, go. can we move on? Because yeah. I, I feel like I'm the bad guy now. No, no, I, you're I'm not David. a bad guy. I, no, no, no. <laughs> this is, it's, it's a, um, I'm seeing this as an educational point because you've already learned from this. I can already tell. You've had points where you're like, uh, don't say that you, I don't know, but like you have because I've pointed it out to you that like people, anyone you know can, can gloss past this. Sure. Let's say, that was just a point in my life. I don't want to talk about it, and I'm just going to radiate positivity to not point to that subject matter. Sure, sure. Because I don't want other people to ever be in that place. No, you no. Know? We um we share similar things, and yeah. it's not something that I want to go on the and air I know, about. Yeah, no, I know. You have a past uh, of things. Yeah, yeah. It's something. But uh, um, the it's whole not, thing is... Guys, calm down. It's nothing, it's, yeah, it's nothing know, brutal. It's uh, <laughs> I know things. But um, the whole thing is that people with their past they can try and hide it they can try and allude to it Mm -hmm. but i don't think saying the movie we are okay so we're on the same page yeah i mean the movie might not have alluded to it but i don't think saying oh the movie didn't allude to it so it's like kind of something we don't need to touch on i think it is something that we do need to touch on especially in society today with like especially like brock turner and stuff saying like sure it's not a sexual assault because it happened outside like his stupid excuse wait what uh, well, no, he's never trying mind. to not say it's intercourse. He's trying to say it's outer course. Like it was, uh, it's all shit. Brock oh, Nurse like the roller coaster asshole. I hate I... him. But like, and that should follow him to his grave. He should die being burdened by that. Sure. But I'm just saying, in my point of view, in my experiences from people I've talked to and stuff, all of this needs to be touched on because people have different experiences. People have different reactions to it. We can never base what the reaction is. And this is actually why I view this film as a good film because it touches on topics that we're still afraid to touch on because of society blaming the victim. I'm not saying you were wrong. I'm not saying I was right. But I am saying we need to touch on it. And I will say we can move on now. Sorry. (laughs) I went on a whole soapbox, but because I think it needs to be boxed i think i I think i think it was an apple box at this point it was a little bigger i will sell it for two hundred two thousand dollars for half the performance quality and it'll call it an apple box (laughs) anywho Um, oh god so margo goes to her house (laughs) and she tries to explain or she tries to kind of she i think she does try to allude to it but nicole beats her to the punch i thought nicole literally like followed her outside and was like so you're just not gonna talk you're not gonna tell me I thought that's See, what happened. I read it as her, um, her Margot po- calls her outside and she's like, Hey, I want to talk. And then Nicole's like, So you're not going to talk about it? And it's like, Nicole, calm down. She's trying to get there. She's trying to build up the strength. She's trying to recall those memories that you don't want to recall. This is a moment where I can't really? actually yeah. confirm or deny w- what you're saying. I didn't you blinked think and you it. missed it. Yeah, I, I don't think it yeah. went down. Well, I was too busy, like, freaking out about the line to the little brother and yeah. writing that it, down. That, well, I so. would say that is a creepy line, but I think that's just because that's how the family knew her as. Like, haha, flirty. Because when you're a flirty person... Also, guys, I, even... I swear we won't go on a soapbox at the yeah. live show. No, yeah. <laughs> like... No. It's all me. It's when you ball. are a Taekwondo ninja, yeah. no, it's just, <laughs> like you don't know what's going through the ninja's head. As a flirty person, <laughs> sorry, I need to get yeah, past. No. I need to get the vibes back you're up. Fine. No, 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 your vibes are fine. But as a flirty person, like it is hard because you don't know. Like I love to flirt with little boys. No, it's different. <laughs> like you can like play around. No, oh god, never mind. I'm gonna backpedal on that one. <laughs> You can't play around with little boys. But, like, you know, you do that thing. You, like, you build up their courage. You do the whole, like, sure, sure, oh, but you're such a handsome little man. You're the word is handsome, not yeah. literally. Oh, no. she was, Let's re- rework the phrase here. And it was, like, literally was on how pedo. old. Yeah, yeah. How old. When are you going to turn old enough for me to fuck you? Yeah. Was Ravage the was phrase. really not a great word. Ravage. Yeah. Welcome uh, to the 90s on that one. We definitely got into blurred lines. Yeah. Um, blurred but lines. But that, li- okay, so, like, to be fair to, yeah. like, I don't want to keep harping on it, but to also, like, like that line also confused my perception of her, yeah. too. Because, like, I was like, that was so out of left field and so weird. She already hit on the dad, and, like, uh, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, girl. Like, and this is your big moment of the movie, and you yeah. just did that. Yeah. So... 
Okay. I get it. And I, I say this, like I said, uh, you want to victim blame somebody? I'm going to blame the director and the editor yeah. for leaving that line in. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, yeah. So, um, or not, or not finishing out her plus the dad, uh, subplot yeah. at all. There's a bunch of stuff they left undone. Absolutely. Um, and they could have done it better, which, uh, as of March of 2018, they're looking, Universal is looking at redoing this film. Um, so that's pretty I good. I don't Hopefully, think that's needed. It's not needed, but I do think it is. Yeah. Just in the sense of like, people do need to see that there is a problem with some men. D- sure. Air quotes around. Uh, not even air quotes. There are some guys. I just that hope. Are great. I hopefully. Um, I, I hope it's it's better present. It's presented yes. in a way that is a bit more seriously and sinister. Like there are so many moments where this could be something well, special. See, this film takes it to. It definitely is zero to one hundred. Yeah. To where it's not that. In society, it's very zero to fifteen to thirty. Right. To, it's. To back down to 20 yeah her up to 40 her like, break scale, she would not it happens most people would not go through what nicole goes through in such a quick amount yeah. of time too this oh, feels like this it happens is, in a week so this is where it all happens so fast yeah so we get their confrontation Margot's like uh um i'm trying to and then nicole's like you're not gonna tell me that you slept with him mm-hmm. i saw it and it's like this very like Margot coming for her or not Margo. Um, Margo getting attacked by Nicole. Margo though verbally. Doesn't, yeah, Margo doesn't try and come back and say this stuff because she just lets Nicole attack her, and that also sounds like victim blaming there. But Margo just drives off. Maybe it's a lot to handle. I'm not saying it's okay on Margo's part. I'm not saying it's okay on Nicole's part. But like shit goes down. Margo drives off, but then Margo finds herself being followed by David. Right. And David eventually um, does a lot of, like, it's a two-way street, and David eventually runs her off the road onto a side road. Because he basically puts his faith in the fact that she's a good enough person to not let him she's get hit by the... She's a driver to swerve off the road. <laughs> no, like, because he's basically playing chicken more with her than with the truck that he's facing down. Yeah. Like... He puts a lot of faith in the fact that it's like he doesn't care about dying, right? And and that's the thing he's so is in love. he like, he puts his faith in the fact that he knows that Margot's a good enough person that won't let him die and swerves so they both can take a right turn into the ditch. Yeah, right. And I'm like, that is ballsy yeah. move for somebody who just raped you. And Marky Mark pulls her out of the car and is like. Ah, fix it, or I'm gonna murder you. Did you tell Nicole? Yeah. Did you tell Nicole? Right? And she's like, no, I don't know how she knew. And he's like, he kisses her on the lips forcibly, grabs her by the throat, and then throws her back onto the car. And he was like, you better fucking fix this! You better fucking fix yeah. it! And then is like, out. Bye. Gotta go to the after school special to <laughs> yeah. murder a guy. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so, um, also, this is where he, um, another extremely iconic scene is that you see him carving something in uh, in the in the mirror into his chest smearing ink on his own chest with with a a sharpened end of a toothbrush yeah right where i'm like in this whole house of horrors that you guys live in you have a razor yeah you don't shave. <laughs> You're very clean shaven, Mark. I think Mark. he's like, it's like this is how I learned it in the prisons, right? You know, it's like I got to do the same thing. No other tattoos, right? but somehow miraculously takes a pen, tattoos himself. Right, takes a takes a pen, breaks it open, bleeds out the ink into his hand, and then takes that and smears it into the carved wounds. Not how that works. I don't know anything about tattoos. That's all you. Uh, you got to get them into a certain layer of. The, you don't um, think that was deep enough? Mm-mm. Okay. Not on surface level. It will stay. I don't think that was surface. That seemed deep. Well, it'll stay for a bit, but unless you actually get the ink to a certain level of your skin, mm-hmm. it won't stay. Okay. So I've given myself like temporary, a uh, temporary tattoo to where I just like did. Uh, well, maybe that's what he's going for. Kind of, te- kind of temporary. You yeah. know, just in case forever. He- doesn't work out. No, he definitely <laughs> temporary tattooed himself. He prison tattooed himself. Right. So it but it's, probably wouldn't yeah. work out. It says, um, it says, Nicole forever. forever. 
Yeah, he wrote it the so way bad. he speaks. Yeah. Nicole forever. So he eventually. But yeah, he smears the ink yeah. into the wounds and then, wa- like, he does the cleanest wipe ever and yeah. it looks the best. Looks like, I was so like. Good. It's yeah. already healed. <laughs> so I was like, that's not possible. Yeah. He, uh, he then goes to school and stalks Nicole and Gary. What's his name? Yes, it's Gary. Her best friend, Gary. Gary. And so Gary. Gary. Um, he, Gary is leaving school and, uh, and David follows him. And then starts chasing him down. In the final moment of this chase, Gary does like a flip onto the oh, road. He does like, <laughs> like a really good flip too. I was yeah. like, that's professional. Yeah, he does like a front he facing backflips. flip, He's and like, then Pew. Mark grabs him and like quickly snaps his neck, Quick just snap. straight up. Scene done. <laughs> yeah, right. And I was like, oh, God, that escalated also quickly. Yeah. But for no like, I didn't see him see more flirtatious between them for him to like escalate that kill either oh you think he should have like made out with them beforehand i think <laughs> gary should have at least maybe embraced her cheek or something being like everything's gonna be okay oh, I thought you something meant gary and uh david no <laughs> gary and david probably should have fucked before that death no came. but this was another moment where it was like um gary should have done a little something more to trigger there was him nothing to warrant Gary's no death. Yeah. Nothing at all, other than being like, yeah. I gotta clean up loose ends that were never loose. So Nicole <laughs> is with her stepmom and her uh, and the stepmom's son mm-hmm. at the mall. Steve is at work and uh, is about to go home for the day, and sees his Mustang has been destroyed. Yes, and he's trying to <laughs> find Nicole with and a family. note with a note on it that says, "Now I've popped or smashed both your cherries." Right, and I was like, "That's kind of a not warranted." Also, line. also at this point. You now have physical like evidence, yeah, that you could call the cops because the cops have been also because anybody who's still They've listening yeah. is like, uh, he's been calling the cops and they're like, not our problem until it becomes a problem, right? And yeah. I'm like, it just became destruction of property, right, in a garage that probably has cameras, like, and you have a note, a handwritten note by him that you could forensically probably match up, like, yeah. we're good, right? And yet he's like. Uh, he goes to his friend who like witnessed it too. He's like, I need, I need your, I need your car and I need your cell phone and, and decides to take things into his own hands yeah. where I'm like, big mistake. So Steve goes to the, uh, <laughs> the meth house, right? And goes into David's room and finds all these other artifacts. Okay. <laughs> There is a superimposed picture. Oh my god! Of Nicole, yeah. like the her face. Photo? No, not the fa- the family photo is not as bad as Nicole. Her face on like the Virgin Mary oh, that <laughs> on the mantle. Uh, <laughs> what was that? And then there's like family photo where it's like instead of Dad's face. Yes, it's David. It's David's face over it. So Marky Walt. Marky Wahlberg, he put his own face over the dad's face in a family photo. So he's imagining he's so creepy. Yeah, I'm gonna bang both mother and daughter. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be both. my family now. I'm gonna uh, make babies. <laughs> yeah, right? right. Um, he also finds the daddy's girl bracelet, but it's been uh scratched. Aw- the daddy's been scratched away and carved in its place is David's, David's girl. girl. Ugh, it's so <laughs> creepy. It's right. around like a proposing ring too. There's a bunch of Chuckies yeah. on the mantle which I think are dressed in her bracelets. So Steven starts demolishing the house. (laughs) And while this is happening, David corners Nicole in a women's restroom in the shopping mall. Yep. And she starts screaming for help, but he covers her mouth and he's like, you're not going to do this. You're going to be my love for my life. You're going to meet me. We're going to get married and we're going to run away. Uh, that's my best David Wahlberg, or David Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg, who plays David. He, like, just has a speech impediment. Mm-hmm. He's not from Boston. Doesn't matter. No, it's cool. And then. You did one of the other Wahlbergs. You're good. Right? <laughs> and then a lady walks in as he's finishing up. He's like, okay, goodbye. And he walks out. And then she's like, please help me. And she actually, like, they do, like. Well, there is a lot of screaming in this movie, by the way, with no action behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. They all now, go home. Yeah, everybody's yeah. gone home, and Margo's like, "I'm gonna roll up and be like, hey, I'm still feeling like <laughs> shit.' But meanwhile, there's no reason for Margo to be in this climax. Yeah, 
Absolutely not. There really not. isn't, but I think it was just for character development. This is why I thought Margot was going to be presented as finally being in on it. Yeah. Right? Uh, I could see it at this point, yeah. Yeah. So the other I'm guys, just looking for anything to defend yeah. what I said earlier. I, just... I know, I know. <laughs> right? Um, the, yeah, like a true lawyer. Um, so the <laughs> other guys are like, oh, we're going to park over here and then walk through the woods. So we No, don't have to they first gate. they come home. Oh yeah, they, they well they come home. Well, they, they come home, the and I'm like, like, "Who did this? How would no they even know? The house is normally now. shit." Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's what I got out right? of that. Yeah, so they see it, and David's like, "I know who did this. You want to yeah. go get him? Let's go get him." And they park on like two blocks over through the woods, I yeah. guess, not through security. Yeah. Which, if you're gonna have a security fence, have it go everywhere, not just on a road. It was silly because yeah. like. It does not seem like there's another house to warrant this yeah. security fence either. Like, is Steve paying this security guard to be his personal security guard? Right. They don't look like they yeah. have that much money. There's an offshoot of a road. I didn't see it. No. There's not yeah. a single other neighbor like, hi, Steven. You know, yeah. hey, right. thanks for the security guard. You pay for us all. Right. You know, like nothing. Hey, guy. I hope thanks you don't for die designing. Soon. <laughs> thanks for designing a security guard. Right. <laughs> Your wife just mentioned that you do security. Yeah. Great <laughs> like, job, thank you. Uh, you look like every other weird like corner business store that was built in 1995 to 2004. Yeah. So, so yeah, they uh yeah, they park like 5 blocks away. They walk through the woods. Uh Margot has showed up at the house and she's been like bah! basically. Yeah. yeah. They and, make up, I guess. Yeah. They don't really talk because by the time they actually do start hanging out, um, shit goes haywire. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So they just show up. They figure out how to. Uh, yeah. right. David and his friends figure out how to cut a telephone wire. Well, that's or not hard. Communication wire. <laughs> I'm like, that's not hard. It's just I wouldn't know how to. Are you kidding me? You just find. Oh wait, that sounds creepy. That I'm gonna describe it. But like, I wouldn't know. You've power seen horror telephone. movies. Oh, you wouldn't know a telephone wire versus a power line. Yeah, I'm not a power phoneologist. <laughs> yeah, you we brought it back. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah, you're not a, a, a no, you don't know. I mean, I don't work you know what a telephone TV. line looks like. It went in the back, back of your telephone back in the day. It's the same cord. What? No. In like the sky? No, it usually runs a, up up the house and onto the yeah, telephone no, lines. Yeah, don't get it. Anyway, so well, one is on the roof, so it's very easily like explainable that they could have just pulled all the lines. What if power comes <laughs> to the roof? What What do you mean power does come to the roof? So does a telephone, apparently. Uh huh. And power is definitely thicker. But they had power. <laughs> right, because they didn't pull the power. Okay, well I don't know how things work. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so they uh, cut off the sound to their telephone. <laughs> That's how I can equate with it. They just cut the telephone line, which yeah. would cut, which Basically, would also cut because the security system it dials into the telephone line to yeah. call the police. That you've two birds and one stone. Their comms are down, <laughs> so I have to look at it in sci-fi. And they need to, they need to get to the bunker and yeah. double pump the the power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they're all like. Ah, we can't talk to anyone. I guess we better board up the house. But, like, people are trying to break in, and people are, like, hitting each other with um, a fire poke. No, and then okay, no. Each other in the hand. You are getting confused. No, I am not. Nobody's hitting anybody with a fire poke. Um, he, as someone stuck their hands through, he smacked him with a fire poke. Yeah, but it's weirdly, like, done off screen. Like, oh, the, the camera, like, pans down to the legs and lets the guy, like, drop the drill that was in his hand. Yeah. Because the guy's like drilling through the reinforced the glass, glass yeah. right? But instead of it being like, oh, let me show what I'm doing to the guy's hand, they're like, uh, we don't want to show you hitting Snacks that. It and it hits yeah, the drill like, the ground. it's going to pan down. So I don't exactly even know what happened to that dude. Yeah. Right? And then another guy has been axing through the front door while Chewbacca has a giant tree log yeah, and, like and is pounding on shit. another door. Yeah. Uh, which was just annoying after a while. It wasn't even yeah. scary. I was like, stop pounding on the door. I was like, open the door and then smack him in the face. Meanwhile, like, David is trying to, prior to this, right before all this, like, action is going down, David, uh, does another iconic, the peephole scene. Yeah. Right? So let me in your fucking house! Right? And you're like, alright. Oh, uh, God. because, like, 
he did the better speech earlier, right? It was like yeah. weird and intimidating, right? This was just like, oh, what? Oh, get out of my face, Mark. Um, and he tries to use the code that he knows earlier, but uh, they use the deadbolt, right? But I thought yeah. that unlocked the deadbolt. There's two deadbolts. Okay. Yeah. Weird. I don't. I don't know. Like it's something where they're like, we're gonna establish that he knows the code, but then immediately. The dad can overrule that, so yeah. who cares that he knows the code? Yeah. Right. And then, as this is happening, uh, yeah, just uh, the one guy's like axing through the door and tries to reach through, and they take a drill. They stab his hand. And yeah, no, they drill his hand, and then you overhear like through voiceover, like I gotta go to the hospital, and then you're like, all right, I guess he's gone. The guy like runs off with I guess one other person right to go to the hospital and that's when the child also uh the youngest boy he escapes through a window to go into the garage to uh yeah we didn't establish on his mom's car the two girls and the little brother went upstairs yeah. and that's also where like some guy is kind of like spider-manning out like a silhouette out of their bedroom, huh. and she takes an umbrella and stabs Stab through them. the glass. Because I guess the upstairs bedrooms don't have reinforced glass. Yeah, I <laughs> right? was like, that's very dramatic for an umbrella. Yeah, but all it, it's it's another one of those things where they're like, um, well, we need something for action here, so yeah. we're not even going to think about just he only reinforced the bottom floor right. i guess well, you know the second floor is on the second floor yeah so. but apparently is extremely easy to get one because uh chewbacca is that's another thing is he like likes- earlier when the dad's like pulling the blinds everywhere he's like turn out the lights and pull the blinds i don't want them to see where we are i'm like well what about chewbacca he's looking through the right. sunroof the whole time he's like i'm on the roof right so and 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 so it's clearly easy to get on the roof. So but you probably Chewbacca, should have like, reinforced the glass. Immediately, he was like, "Yeah, I'm on the first floor now." Yeah, right? that didn't matter. He just wanted to do that pointing thing again. Yeah, and gyrate with his hips. Uh, so stabs the guy. The little kid goes into the, or he manages to make it into the garage. He um he has the mom's keys, and he has to like quietly turn on the mom's car. And he we does. Missed a po- we missed a moment. We missed a whole thing. Uh, the security guard. Okay. Yeah. So, so meanwhile, Nicole in step. her bedroom is uh, like, how do I get a message out? I see the security guard uh, lights down there. So she starts doing not SOS. <laughs> like, it's definitely not. I like, I don't know Morse code, but I know SOS. No, it's just like flashlight on and off. <laughs> right. And... But the, the, the security guard's like, well, that's weird. Instead yeah. of being like, well, that's a TV. Yeah, <laughs> he know? didn't know like how danger worked, but he was like, I'll check it out. Which, right. like, I would rather have that security guard than any yeah. other. So the security guard comes up to the house and immediately sees David. And David's like, why well, don't just here to see my girl? Like, what's going on? You can't do this. Right? Takes him. And then Chewbacca comes out of nowhere with, like, a hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> but like this the was security guard this is like, insane. The security guard's like fucking Matrix, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like and then has it. two guns. Like he's like like at a, a standoff. Like at high noon is like all right, everybody, hands up, right? And then Stephen comes out of nowhere because right. I don't know why Stephen decides like oh definitely it's okay to leave the house. Like everything goes down so quickly, boom, 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 boom. That I'm like, there's no way that Stephen even knew that. David was being apprehended. Right. You know, he just is like, yeah, let's go out. Then slugs both Chewbacca and David. And while the security guard is holding them, like, basically uh, at gunpoint, the other guy. And that's why I said we skipped it. Like, we couldn't skip over it because yeah. this is the guy that you were about to describe what happened to him. Yeah. His death is the one who kills. He basically shoots. You just... uh. He shoots the security guard in the back. He came out of nowhere and shot him. So then I'm like, wait. Um, Who they... got their hands drilled? So there were five guys. Yeah. And that's that's that was my biggest question as I trickled down, like, who died and who didn't. 
Two guys are completely unaccounted for by the end of this movie. So those should be Handrill and Handrill assistant to hospital? <laughs> yes, I guess so. Yeah. I think they took off into the woods and yeah. got it back into the car and was like, you're on your own, right? Um, but so now they have Steven hostage at the front door. And another moment where it's like, oh, they have marital problems and stuff like that. But nothing's been established that like... I love you more than anything. Yes, open the door or anything. And he also doesn't really try to be like, no, don't, like, save the kids, he's save like, me. I gotta do it, sorry. And he's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll survive though, so I guess that's all right. Right. Like, um, so now they take both parents in onto the uh, couch and they... Oh. Meanwhile, in the... Um, in the... Mm-hmm portion of the amusement park they won a peace pipe because Native yeah american <laughs> that's great so anyway <laughs> um native americans are great but so we appropriated them just for the same david <laughs> for some reason sends chewbacca up to, to chewbacca, the room instead of on his own he was like, I'm going to go upstairs and, like, find the girl. Well, I don't understand why the roles weren't reversed. Like, right? especially because, like, Chewbacca immediately comes in the room and is like, let's get rapey, Nicole. Yeah. Right? And then, and this is another one of those, like, everybody screams or makes their presence known instead of just quietly sneaking up on people and, like, stabbing them or hitting them yeah. over the head or something. So, like, Margot, who's been hiding behind a wall, uh... Instead of like going up behind him and like knocking him out, Gets first is like, to her. Ah! and then jumps on his back and is like doing the like stereotypical girl thing of like, ah! yeah. and you're like, damn it, like that was your shot, like to take him out and then make at least David think like it was okay to come up or something and do the same thing to him. Boom, done, over, right? Yeah. But nope, not this movie. Not at all. Um, then Chewbacca is like wrestling with Margot, and another thing, like Nicole, I get it, you're 16, whatever, right? Which I also don't know how old Margot is because she's never at high school, so I don't know how old she is. But I get it, you're 16, you're not, you're scared, you're not going to help. But like in this moment, you probably would have helped your friend, and then yeah. later, you probably would have helped your dad, you know. But she also always is like cowering in a corner, which yeah. is also not good for when you're supposed to be like the victim turned. I don't Heroine. know. Yeah, yeah. Right? Doesn't happen for her. Uh, really doesn't. The whole movie. Yeah. Like, dad's the one that does the final kill. So, oh, yeah. um, so now, I don't know. Mar- uh, David comes upstairs because, uh, he's, uh, Chewbacca's knocked out Margot and has moved back on to Nicole. Meanwhile, the, the youngest child has right. backed over a villain and murdered him. Mm-hmm. This child has murdered, like, a person and a half at this point. Yep. Uh, seen his dog get beheaded, and he. Uh, by the way, the dog got beheaded. And oh then, God, damn it! I forgot about yeah, the dog. It's fine. A dog got beheaded. We don't need to like touch on that. <laughs> and then, um, the, uh, yeah, he backs over a tr- uh, a, a, a man, and then he goes back inside. He calls nine one one and goes back inside. To oh, I didn't even see mom. him call nine one one. I just saw the cell phone like light up he and called, he dialed yeah. not nine one one. It was like two five three nine two. No, he called nine one one on his mom's car cell phone and then went back inside. Saw his mom was locked up in handcuffs. Ran outside to the security guard, got the keys, and came back inside to unlock his mom. Sure. Meanwhile, the dad <laughs> is like knocked out in the hallway because of uh, David. And they manage to unlock him while David is... Uh, so David's, like, kind of confronting Nicole and basically yeah. being like, hey, leave with me. Well, unlock Steven, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Steven is in handcuffs at the the at the at top of the stairs. And David is, like, trying to convince Nicole, like, we can get married. We can go away. And um, she's, like, kind of playing along. And then the mom... There's a lot of, like... Oh, we can run away. Okay, well, we got to kill your dad. And yeah. She's like, no. And he's like, if we're going to well, run away, we got to kill your father. Yeah. Like that right? shit. Yeah. And um, yeah, Fight. it's the only way to be free, yeah. you know? And uh, so as that's all happening, uh, Steven gets his handcuffs unlocked and 
also, this is another moment where it's like, Steven, you should be quiet. You should sneak up on him, right? Yeah. But instead, immediately, as ah. as soon as the handcuffs are like, yeah. click, he's like, <laughs> like stumbling like, around and the handcuffs are jingling. Yeah. Like, like everybody's an idiot. Yeah. But it's like, it's like they're throwing each other against things and it's like, well, someone's going to be thrown against something mm-hmm. or someone's going to be thrown out something. And right. It's like, they get dangerously close to like this thing. They get close to that thing. They get close to like a window. So Nicole uh, takes and um, as um, as David tackles Stephen to the ground. Yeah, Nicole, Nicole takes like, the uh, peace pipe uh, that and stabs it through David's back, and then um, and then really. David proceeds to um, wrestle around some more. Yeah. And then it's just in the prime moment and gets kicked through another window, which I'm like, wait a minute. How many windows does this bedroom have? I don't fully understand it, but it looked like Steven grabbed David and did like a back roll and then (laughs) kicked David out the window is what I like to imagine. And then he flew out and landed on an archipelago and just smashed on the ground. I felt that landing. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's dead. There's no way that's Yeah. No, that was good. Yeah. And then, um. Done. Yeah, the movie, like, they literally hug for a moment, and then they're like, you want to just start the credits? Let's go. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. That That's there it is. fear. <laughs> uh, Our heaviest episode yet. Yeah. Without getting too heavy, would you recommend this movie? I would, honestly, just because I think there's a lot of people that don't understand how this is. This is how dangers happen. This is how it gets there. Yeah. A little bit. Just because... It does progress like this. It progresses in a different fashion, but it progresses like this. Sure. Okay. Um, if you're a fan of Wahlberg's early career or Reese, go for it. Yeah. I I don't think Reese like she carries the film. She helps carry it, but I don't I think, think that this is. She has weak points, but I think this is. She has weak points, but I think she does. At points, be like, "Oh, that's the Reese we know in 2018." Sure. She has those strong points. Okay, I don't know what that Reese is. Honestly, <laughs> I feel like she's Watch always Big Reese. Little Lies because it's so good. Okay, yeah, it's a good HBO series. It's oh. quick too. Yeah. All right, so uh, that's what we thought about it. But some people thought it was amazing. They give five star reviews on Amazon and IMDb, and so we asked them. So give me five. All right. So the first one comes from by Cheryl Owens. <laughs> uh, it's written to go down as a classic. This was written September 21st, 2016. One sentence. Here we go. This movie to me is going down as a classic along other movies like play Misty for me. Five stars. <laughs> what is play Misty for me? It's an Eastwood film. I have zero I idea. haven't seen it yet. Never heard of it. Why'd you pick honestly? that one then? Because I was like, this doesn't sound like a real movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's real. Doesn't uh, make sense. Next one. Not a classic. Neither of those. L- next I would have heard. Next one's brought to you by the letter M. <laughs> Just M. And uh, titled, First Love Should Never Be This Scary. Written 2015. PSA. A crazy movie from the past that I needed for my collection. Mark Wahlberg is insane in this movie. And to think, stuff like this can actually happen in real life. Frowny face. <laughs> I recommend this to anyone. If you're a questionable, if you're in a questionable relationship, this could be your wake up call. If you're not in a relationship, this could be helpful to recognize the warning signs. Five stars. PSA review. <laughs> uh, the next one is from Apple Hunter. Uh, written in 2000. This... Looking for that great iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apple Hunter. It still was at that point. Yeah. Uh, this movie rocks. This movie is fun. It ain't scary, but often it's very funny, in, quota- in quotations, unintentionally, and entertaining. I give it a 10. Yeah! Reese Witherspoon and Mark Wahlberg kick ass. This movie is is one of the funniest movies. <laughs> Ten stars. No. <laughs> I mean, who's who's watching this movie and been like, <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. 
Oh my god. Oh no. Yeah. So the last one is written by uh Jed Avison and uh also in two thousand, titled Without Question the Best Flick I've Ever Seen. Fear was the most brilliant flick, in quotations, I have ever seen. Nothing has ever kept me in suspense like that before. From beginning to end, without question, a sure buy. In reference to the term in quotations flick, which I used earlier to describe this film, was because I would not categorize this as a movie, but just the same. Perfectly done. Two thumbs way up. Some movies aren't movies. They're flicks. <laughs> okay, so that just about does it for us here uh, at Bombs Away. Uh, I have nobody. I was going to thank you for being on the show right? today, you. <laughs> uh, my opinions. Yep, thank you. <laughs> my angst. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, 2008. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Me Too movement today. Yeah. Um. And uh, if you if you want to reach out to us, if you got some comments, you want to tell me I was a moron on this one, go for it. Um, you can reach out to us at Bombs Away oh, Show. You learned on this. Yes, one. it's yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> uh, reach out to us Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Bombs Away Show. You can email us contact at Bombs Away Show. Please join us August sixteenth for Miami Connection. Please, there's only a couple tickets left. Please come out and support an awesome event uh it's gonna be amazing uh that just about does it for me my name is jonathan i am jared and let me get your fucking house John here from the Bonds Away Podcast, and I'm here to talk to you about the place where we record. That's right, the Frida Cinema. What is the Frida Cinema? Well, it's a program of the Long Beach Cinematique here in California, and it serves Santa Ana and neighboring communities as a nonprofit art house cinema dedicated to enriching, connecting, and educating communities through the art of cinema. But it's so much more than that. Guys, not only do they screen amazing films here, but they also hold out of this world special events. And when we're talking about special events, we're talking about shadow casting. Shadow casting, if you don't know, is where actors perform in front of the movie that you're seeing and they have costumes and they're doing audience participation and it is just an amazing event. The shadow casting that we do here is films such as Rocky Horror, or Little Shop of Horrors, or Repo the Genetic Opera, or even The Forbidden Zone. Wow, The Forbidden Zone. Like, when's the last time you saw that? Or maybe shadow casting isn't your thing, but what about rooftop cinemas? That's right, right on our rooftop, we do special screenings of throwback movies that you love, including Ghostbusters, or the current Beauty and the Beast, Guardians of the Galaxy, or even Jurassic Park. And that's not the only thing with these rooftop cinemas. They also have special people that show up, special guests, including the Orange County Ghostbusters and their vehicles and their costumes, or maybe Jurassic Park and the Jurassic Park Jeep. Have you ever gotten a photo with any of these things? I have, and it's because I was there at these events. So if you're looking for special events to go to or like out of this world just crazy audience participation things like Scott Pilgrim and with lights and sound and like things that you've never even seen before go to the Frida Cinema you can check out the Frida Cinema locations filming schedules and everything entertainment wise at www.thefridacinema.org or you can follow them on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Frida Cinema and on Instagram and Twitter at the Frida Cinema. The Frida Cinema for the filmmakers, for the film goers, and for you. This has been a production of Big Bulb Entertainment, executive produced by Jonathan Young. For more media and information, visit us at www.bigbulbentertainment.com. Big Bulb, what's your bright idea? Shh.